This is a, uh, a regular meeting of the Brockton Planning Board. This is uh, February, the, Tuesday, February the 2nd, 2021. And at the time is 6 p.m. And I have a prepared statement that I am required to read. And it goes as follows. I am calling this February the 2nd, 2021 meeting of the Brockton Planning Board to order. My name is Bob Pelagi and I am the chair of the board. This meeting is being recorded in accordance with the governor's order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general laws, chapter 30A, section 20, relating to the 2020 novel coronavirus outbreak emergency. The February the 2nd, 2021 public meeting of the Brockton Planning Board shall be physically closed to the public to avoid group congregation. Real-time public participation and comment can be addressed to the Planning Board utilizing the Zoom virtual meeting software for remote access. This application will allow users to view the meeting and send a comment or question to the chair via the question and answer function. Submitted text comments will be read into the, re into the record at the appropriate points in the meeting. For those of you joining us by phone who want to ask a question, uh, please press star nine to raise your hand. A copy of the recording and transcript will be posted to the city's webpage within 72 hours. All votes will be done via roll call to ensure count accuracy. At this time, I will conduct a quorum call. Board members, please respond in the affirmative to indicate your attendance at this meeting. Larry Hassan. Here. Tony Gonzalez. Here. Reggie Thomas. Here. Bob Pelagi is here. We, uh, as I'm sure you're aware, we're now at least temporarily a four man board. Uh, with four members voting in the affirmative, I declare we have a quorum. And our rather lengthy agenda is as follows. We have acceptance of minutes, endorsement of any a and plans, subdivision plans and or lot releases, a return of surety, that's for Chilton Woods subdivision, that's right for uh, Mike Peroni, I guess. Uh, the first agenda item is the zoning change. Basically, it's a fee increase for, for the uh, to, to uh, research the buildability of lots. Uh, second agenda item is site plan approval. Properties at 955 Belmont Street proposal is for a service station at the end convenience store. And the representative attorney, Danielle DeFault, I believe. Uh, number three is the site plan approval. Properties at 683 Belmont Street proposal is a used car lot. Representative J.K. Holmgren. Four is permission to return to the Zoning Board of Appeals. The property is at 68 to 70 Field Street. The denial was July the 14th of 2020. Uh, Marie Lorquette uh, is re represented by John Creedon. That item has been continued to March the 2nd, 2021. Number five, permission to return to the Zoning Board of Appeals. The property at 598 North Main Street. The zoning, uh, zoning denial was March the 12th of 2019, the applicant is Maria Flores. Six, permission to return to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, properties at 1 Millet Street, the denial was uh, July the 28th of 2020. The applicant, it looks like it's early investments. Seven, the, uh, definitive subdivision. Property is a, is a plot to Belgravia Avenue. It's a four lot residential subdivision. Representative Silva Engineering, that has been continued to March the 2nd, 2021. Eight, property is a, it's a definitive subdivision. Property is at, um, on map 37, plots four, six and 18 Augusta Avenue on plot 36 Prospect Street. It's an 18 lot residential subdivision. That number seems to float a little bit. I'm not sure it's 18, but that's what it says. Uh, owner representatives Fred, Frederick Kepshi and, and the representatives Curly and Hanson. Number nine is preliminary subdivision, properties at 42 Quincy Street. It's a five lot, uh, I believe now it's a, it's been reduced to what, four, Pam? It is four, yes. Okay, it's a four lot a residential subdivision. Uh, the owner representative of Springfield Ventures Realty Trust. Uh, item 10, preliminary subdivision is property at 166 Fairview Avenue. It's a two lot residential subdivision. Owner representative is Christopher Mathers. 11 is a preliminary subdivision of properties at plot uh, 211 Weir, I guess, 203 and 207 Waverly Park Avenue. It's a seven lot residential subdivision. The owner and representative is Hyatt 
Hyacinth and, and Everett Realty and J.K. Homer is a representative. And the last item, the 12th item is a preliminary subdivision. The property is at 76 South Street, a two lot residential, sub, residential subdivision. Um, that is uh, Adeline Lara, LaRock, LaRock, I guess it is Adeline LaRock, and that J.K. Homer is representative. And we were just learned that that has been continued. So. To March 2nd. I'm sorry? Continue to March 2nd to a date. Oh, continue to March 2nd, thank you. I'll make a note. All right. So we're going to do our best to keep this in a reasonable time length. We'll be as efficient as we can with each one of these agenda items. So the first order of business, we have a little administrative work to do. So we've got the uh, um, I'm sorry? Chair, there are no minutes from that meeting we had two weeks ago, so. All right, fine. And mm -hmm. the return of surety, we're still waiting for the final ask bill, so. Okay, so we can move to item number one? Yes. Wow, look at us go. So the first agenda item is uh, number one is uh, section 2750 appendix C article seven buildable lot. So Mr. May, would you want to give us some background on that, please? Uh, good afternoon or good evening. The building department and the city are requesting that uh, we amend this section of the uh, zoning code to increase the fees. The fee hasn't been increased in uh, God knows how long. And uh, because it's mentioned in the zoning ordinance and not in the rules and regulations, it does require it to come to the building, uh, to the planning board for their uh, non-binding recommendation to the ordinance committee. And then finally to the full board of uh, city council for their final approval. And Pam, I don't have it in front of me, but do you know what the new fee will be? It says $250 and that will also, um, thank you because there are some title search, there's some title search work that needs to be done and that will help pay for that work also. So just, just for clarity, this is the fee that, that, a, that a landowner or a prospective landowner would pay to the building department to have the law office research the buildability of a piece of property. Correct. Is that, am I stating that correctly? Okay. That is correct. Or an yeah. outside, or outside, an outside attorney. Outside counsel. <clears throat> uh, members, is there any deliberation, any comments on that? No. All right. Hearing none, would someone like to make a motion? Um, I'm sorry? <laughs> are there, uh, it is a public hearing. We need to oh, wait, have. I'm uh, sorry. Does this, does this require public input? Yes, sir. All so, right. if if any of the attendees wish to speak on this matter, please raise your hands and uh, electronically. So, at the bottom of your Zoom um, screen, you'll see an icon. If you uh, press that, it says raise hands or raise hand. Um, I will um, unmute and allow you to provide testimony. And I do not see anyone with their hands raised, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you. I thought, my bad, I thought this was just one of those items that needed just a uh, an endorsement from the planning board, but okay, wonderful. So we don't have any input. Would someone like to make a motion? Motion to approve zoning. Um... Zoning fee and zoning change request. Yeah. Well, Recommending it favorably. Motion to approve. I'll second that motion. All right. So we, the motion's been made and second. Uh, a vote on the on the roll call. Uh, Larry Hassan. Yes. Tony Gonzalez. Yes. Reggie Thomas. Yes. Bob Pelagi is a yes. So. Second item is a site plan approval. That's property at 955 Belmont Street, service station convenience store. Rep Representative Attorney Danielle uh, Dufault. 
Danielle, is there anybody else with you? Yes, thanks, Pam. Uh, tonight with us um, from Colbia is Larry Coburn and Michael Gazdaco, and from AU Engineering, Paul Sylvia and Rich Defusco. Um, Ooh, okay, wait a minute. Sorry. <laughs> Michael. There's some Gazzucco? other members um, from my colleague John Russell and um, Colbia. Slow down, slow Yo. down, slow down. Sorry. Michael Gazzucco? Gazdaco. Forgive me, Mike. Thank you. Richard DeFuso? Yep. Yeah, okay. And Dan Danielle, who is going to be the spokesperson for your group, please? I will be speaking on behalf of Colbia, uh, Mr. Chair. All right. I, I think I believe, you mentioned four people. Who is the four? Uh, Paul Sylvia, please. Oh, there he is. Got it? Okay, good. Thank yep. you. Okay. Are we, are we ready, Mr. May? We are ready. <laughs> All right. Well, Danielle, if you could give us just a brief outline of the project. We have a rather lengthy yes. agenda tonight. So if you could give us a brief outline of the project, uh, we'd appreciate that. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the planning board. Um, Danielle Dufault uh, from Adler, Pollock & Sheehan on behalf of the applicant, Colbia Enterprises, LLC for its site plan approval uh, request um, for 955 Belmont Street. Um, with us tonight, as we mentioned, is um, from Colbia is Larry Colburn, who is the chief strategy officer, and Michael Gazdaco, who is the director of construction, and our engineers, uh, Paul Sylvia from AU Engineering and Rich Defusco from AU Engineering. Uh, my colleague John Russell is on as well, um, in case I need moral support, which, you know, in COVID and Zoom times, we all need that. So I appreciate that. <laughs> um, so Mr. Chair, just briefly, the facts and travel. Um, we were originally in front of um, the city uh, for technical review in July of 2020, um, where we received feedback from the various departments and constituencies on our proposed raise and redevelopment of 955 Belmont Street, which is currently operating as gas station and convenience store. Um, and uh, based on the technical review comments and um, recommendations, we, and obviously by the ordinances, we then were went in front of the Brockton Conservation Commission um, and received approval from them on December, I believe it was December 16th, 2020. And they offer, um, they uh, issued their order of, order of conditions, which has been recorded um, since then. Um, at, in front of the Conservation Commission, there was a few changes to the plans, which I'll point out. Those are the significant ones from the last time we were in front of uh, the planning board. Um, one, of, one of the major changes uh, that the members may see in the plans is we, um, with, and I should stop for one second. I would like to say thank you. The, the city has been so helpful. Pam has been so helpful. Agent Chave from the Conservation Commission has been so helpful. Um, the guidance of the Conservation Commission, this whole process while we understand we have to comply with everything the city requires, um, has never played hide the ball. And we appreciate this, especially as we all know, it's really hard to get things done in these times. So I just wanna say thank you. Um, so we worked with Agent Chave. We were able to um, discover, uh, there was, as we talked about earlier, the technical review, a 25 foot, 50 foot wetland possible issue. Um, we did. A, some site visits and we were able to determine that uh, there, that issue was a little bit bigger than we thought. So we redesigned our plans to satisfy Agent Chave and the commission. And those are the site plans which you have in front of you with our amended application. Um, with those plans, you will note uh, that the snow removal and storage has been moved to the opposite side of the uh, property now on the southwesterly corner. Um, and uh, include also the trash enclosure, which was something we had planned to begin with. Um, 
We also have eliminated the bioretention area because determined that it was necessary to move some of the proposed improvements out of the uh, wetland area and have satisfied the commission um, to that end. One of the other, um, I think, significant yeah. for us. Yes, sorry. I, I was going to ask, um, would you or your engineer like to sh uh, share your drawings so you can point and talk as we go? Sure. Let me. Yeah, that might be helpful. Yes. I figure Michael spent all this time in college working on this degree. He should be able to put it up on it. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so let me pull. I can do this. Oh, you've got it. All right. I can do this. I feel yeah. confident, yet extremely nervous, but I can do this. So I have the plans as approved by um, the Conservation Commission and as submitted. So here, let's see if I can blow this up to not to. So here you'll see, um, this is the determination that we worked on with Agent Chave, where the, um, the, the 50 only, uh, foot, the 25 foot wetland buffer was, and you know, with. Uh, you're sharing, you're sharing um, no. Windows Explorer and not the actual application. Huh, really? Okay, I feel like I had my plans up. One second, let me get out of that. Sorry, I apologize for that. So, so you may, if it doesn't open up right away, you may have to unshare and then reshare. Okay, do you possibly see that? No. Did that come up? Can you see that, Rob? No. All right, that let me did not stop come sharing. I will stop sharing and let's try this. Let's try this again. Let me okay, screen share. Yes. Yay. See, that's the anxiety that my life is faced with in COVID. Thank you for your patience. So these yeah, are. No, I, would, I would suggest sheet C2, sure. maybe possibly. Absolutely. So this is sheet C2. Let me enlarge this for the group. How's that for a view? Yeah, it's still pretty dense, but you could you could bring. Yeah. It. So, Mr. Chair, if I could, maybe C1 is a little less dense and still yeah. shows the buffer. Is that is that it? okay? Yes, please. Yeah. Yeah. So here and, and we don't we don't need the fine the fine fine detail because we realize that you went before Concom and you you submitted a notice of intent. You you've received your order of conditions. So thank you. Yeah, we appreciate that. So just to point out the the change. So we we're able to determine this is where the twenty five foot no disturb wetland buffer was. So we modified the redevelopment plan and moved this portion of the development that was originally very close or yeah. potentially inside we moved it out so that it was far enough away that there was no issue and 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 agent chave was was very pleased we did a site visit with agent chave and and reflagged the area and was able we were able to determine that this was the best layout and this is what the the commission um blessed okay. um, as part of the order of conditions. So also as part of the order of conditions, um, as I was mentioning earlier, the snow removal and track, well, let me stop for a second. So originally the tr right now, the existing conditions, the trash enclosure is located um, over on, on this side of the property. So knowing that we were redeveloping and knowing that we wanted to be very cognizant of the wetland buffer, we moved it over to the other side of the property, which we also moved in the redevelopment, we had planned to put snow removal on um, this edge of the property. And based on the recommendations from the commission, you'll see the snow storage is located here in the upper corner of the property and along the side of the proposed new building. Um, and that was again, uh, upon the recommendations of the commission. Um, the other, uh, 
notable change from when we appeared in front of the commission and which was something that we were you know happy to oblige and work with the commission on is from the L1 and I'll try to go slowly but quickly um, on our landscaping plan we were able to incorporate uh, many more we, we keep the existing mature trees um, and we were able to incorporate uh, many more native uh, species of trees and shrubs um, in within you know our landscape plan um, and as Pam's been along the journey with us um, <laughs> as, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I've, I've been schooled about native, native species of uh, the trees and shrubbery in Brockton, so um, yeah, yeah. it's been a great learning. Yeah, Danielle, can I sneak in a question? Sure, absolutely. Uh, do you like to be put on the spot? Um, so if I answer yes, I think <laughs> I love it. I, I will do okay. my best to answer tell your me, question. Tell me, tell me the percentage of green space, because one of the things in new development, which is I'm sure you know, is that we want to try to incorporate as much green space and vegetation that's you know that's responsible development so can you tell me what the percentage of the green space is on this project yes so what i what i will say and that is a very good question and and a consideration of ours as well so i will answer in two ways i will first say that while the size of the c store the season of quarter market store um is twice the area of the existing store. Um, we still provide more than double the green space requirement. And if I may, because, you know, I'm, I have a pretty good memory, but it's been kind of a tough few months. I'm going to cheat and go to our zoning table, um, which should show, yes. So the green space requirement is for this zoning area is 10% as existing. Um, we do recognize it's a reduction in the existing green space, but it's still double that which is required under the zoning ordinances. So you can see 10% required, existing 45, we're still at almost 30% of green space. Well, did I, did we, I do okay? We would, we would call that 25, but okay. Okay, we're going to call it. Oh, I apologize. You, um, yes, okay. I did almost really well, but yes, 25. You did, you did very well. <laughs> Thank you. And so you're going to, as far as the vegetation goes, you're going to be planting mature trees, or you're not, you're going to be planting something better than spotted trees. Yeah, so we're keeping the mature trees. Let me just, um, so just for viewing purposes, let's scroll back down to the landscape plan. So we have three existing very mature trees, but one of the things in, with the requirements of the order of conditions and the, the commission's recommendation, the um, pulling down and, and replacing some of the species that are there will require us to replace them so these will be replaced, but the intent, um, and it is now, this serves as a natural buffer between the store and you know the, the, the adjoining lot. That is the same intent. It will just be with different trees. Um, I'm not exactly sure of the size. And if, if you would like us to speak to that, we can definitely- um, No, you don't need to go. I mean, I, okay. I think in your detail sheets, you did have calipers on some of the plantings. Yes. Um, we just don't want, you know, what we call, I guess, I hate the phrase, it's called build, builders plants or th things like that. They're, we want plants, we want plants that, that are young plants, but that are not, not starter plants, I guess you'd say. Uh, valid and excellent point. I will say that the client is spending a great deal of money and resources to improve this store. So the landscape that we will be providing, um, we of course would like it to, you know, enhance the total look of the project. And I think as you, I'm trying to get to the last sheet where it shows the the beautiful um, finished product. So we keeping that in mind, and 
I was thinking you say you didn't want puny little trees, but you said it much more eloquently. Um, it it will be they will be replaced with trees that will mature, um, and and based on whatever the measurements were in the lands in, in sheet L one. Um, but of course, if we're you know the client spending, Colby is very proud of their brand and family-owned business. They will. Um, not be skimping okay. on the landscaping. Yeah. So, um, um, we'll, we'll comply, and, and as you know, so we'll be, we'll be complying with the commission. The commission had, these were revised plans for sheet L1 was blessed by the commission. So we will be complying with what is so, uh, provided so, there. Yep, I, I don't mean to, I, I don't mean to rush you, but just in the interest of, the conservancy of time. I mean, sure. you, you're, you're so basically stated you, you you went to the zoning board of appeals. You've satisfied all of the requirements of, of the conservation commission. Uh, apparently, it sounds like you've satisfied all the all the requests of the check review. It would sound uh, because here you are. You're ready for approval. Uh, do the if there are if you don't have any other pertinent points, Daniel, and I'm, I apologize. If no, I, okay. I feel, feel like I'm cutting you off, but no. do the, any of the other planning board members have any other comments? No com no comments, but I just noticed um, changing the coffee shop. So Mary Lou's is changing to premises. Um, no, I, can, I can speak to that, Danielle. No, Mary, Mary Lou's is, is coming back in. Yeah, um, I, was, I was trying to say, where, where does it say premises? Wait, stop. <laughs> yeah. Yes, no, no, Mary, Mary Lou is uh, involved in this as well. They will be coming back in as the co brand on this space. All right, very good. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> That's good. Uh, all right. Uh, so, any other board members have any questions? Uh, okay. Um, the only comment that I wanted to make, I just quickly went through the site plan. I know, I know it's had some rigorous reviews, but I didn't see, and maybe maybe it was my my error, but I didn't see any stabilized construction exits. I think it's very important. You're working on the state highway there. You're going to need probably one at each one at each entrance. Did, was there one on, a, on one of your detail sheets, and I didn't see it? So. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to stay in my lane as um, the attorney for the client, so I will let either Paul or Rich from AU um, answer that question. They're much more familiar with the site plan, so Paul or Rich. Um, if you, um, sir, I can I can speak to this. Or Michael, uh, sheet, thank yeah, you. Yeah, Michael's here again. Uh, on sheet ER1, we, uh, we have all of our erosion control measures, um, and we do... Uh, abide by uh, strict uh, no overflow from the site to make sure that everything is stays on the site and clean up uh, every day. Of course, we're on a state highway, so that, that matters. Okay, so you, and you're providing one or two? At both entrances. Yeah, there's two entrances uh, off of that, that road, yeah. Okay, and I'm, I apologize, sir. Does, does your plan indicate that? I, I believe it is under the, on sheet ER1. Mm. You said ER1, Michael? Correct. In yeah. other words, it shows it on the plan view, and then you have a detail in your detail sheet. Yeah, and the, and the erosion control and uh, order of procedures, um, it, it usually is detailed in that section. I'm going to take a quick look at it right now. Yeah. That's, that's really my only comment. I, I'd like to make sure that your, that your final plan set shows two, two stabilized construction exits with, with details. So uh, yeah, we, we can definitely uh, have that as a condition. Uh, Thank you. Approval. So, um, all right. Um, if there is, and I apologize, but we have rather lengthy agenda. So it, on the part of the applicant, if there isn't any other significant points that you feel as though you want to make, um, I Mr. think- Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. If I could just make a, a comment, um, I gave a sheet to Pam today, and it just covers the basics with um, 
mulch placement, uh, emergency responder radio requirements, and traffic calming devices. The other question I had, and you just have to refresh my memory, um, you're planning on two tanks um, of 15,000 apiece, is that correct? I believe that is the plan, yes, replacing yes, the tanks that, is, that are there. Yes. That is correct. Right here. And, and what is your current license capabilities? Are you aware of that? Yes, we do have that. Um, right now, we the current USTs that we have, forgive me for one second, we do have two USTs, I believe, um, I would have to check on that for you, but I believe that we wouldn't be seeking any new licenses for the for the USTs we're using to replace the current um, USTs. Is there, uh, Chief, is there something specific that you were? Um, no, I just want to make sure that you're covered by your license for whatever you put into the ground. Sure, absolutely. Um, if we could supplement that, but I believe that there's no need to, we're not seeking any new license or an amendment of the current license um, in order to replace the USTs that are currently at the site. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. All right, uh, at this time then Rob, uh, this being a public hearing, uh, I guess we can open this up to the public for any comments. Attendees, if you have any questions or comments, please uh, use the raise your hand function, or you can use the question and answer function, uh, but raising your hand is the easiest and fastest way to go. And I do not see anyone raising their hand, sir. All right, wonderful. And before we close it out, does the planning department itself any comments that they'd like to render? We don't have any additional comments. We feel that it satisfies the uh, site, site plan approval. Okay, wonderful. All right, well, hearing none, uh, or hearing that was the only comment from the planning department, um, I guess we can move to a, uh, to a vote. Is, would someone care to make a motion? Motion to yes, sir. Uh, one of the representatives, certainly, sir. Yeah. I just wanted to uh, to chime in um, and, and speak to the fire marshal's uh, point. Um, we are reducing our uh, fueling capacity. We currently have four 10,000 gallon tanks, and we are replacing them with two 15,000 gallon tanks. Okay, thank you very much. All right. Um, okay, would someone care to make a motion? Um, I move to make a motion to approve the site plan approvals for 955 Belmont. Is there a second, uh, please? I'll second that. And don't we have conditions, um, your conditions, uh, Mr. Chair? The, the no. construction, the construction, stabilized construction entrances. The condition that the construction entrances, exits are on the plan? Is that what I heard you say? Yeah, both Definitely. on the plan and, and detail. On, on the plan and on detail. I mean, that, there are other, there are other boilerplate standard, standard uh, what would you say, conditions too, that, that go along with an approved site plan, but, but specifically that's one of the ones that I made. So that's okay. the only one that I heard, correct, Dan? Yep, I got that it. Correct. Okay. So on the roll call, motion been made and seconded to approve. Larry Hassan? Did we lose Larry? Yes. Okay, Is Larry's it? in the affirmative. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. Reggie Thomas? Yes. Bob Pelagi is a yes. So I think you're all set, folks. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time, Mr. Chair, members of the planning board. Thank you, everyone. Thank and you. I'll email you tomorrow with what we'll need. Okay, perfect. Thanks so much, Pam. Good night, You're everyone. Welcome. Good night, and thank you. Okay, agenda item number three. Hey, we need to move. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I know. It up, Good night, Mr. Chair. <laughs> what? We'll be here to midnight. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, you heard what I said three times. Yep. Um, site plan approval. Property is at. 
863 Belmont Street. Uh, it's a used town lot. J.J. Holman's a representative. Scott, is there anybody else? Scott, anybody else with you? <laughs> If there's anybody else on this case, please raise your hand so I can move you into uh, allow you to make your presentation. Scott. I think his daughter went back to college. Okay. Maybe go to the next one and come back to Wait a minute. Why can't you hear me? <laughs> Is Scott muted or something? He's he's texting you. He is, but we can't hear him. So So let's go to the next case and ask Scott to log off and log back in again. All right, so we'll, we'll put this. Item on okay. Hold, I guess. Okay. Five ninety six Main North Main Street. Could you raise your hand if you're the five ninety eight? Five ninety Main. There she is. Okay. So. Okay. Floor has been continued. Next item is 598 North Main Street. It's a permission to return to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, Maria Flores. Do we I, have Maria? Yes. Sorry, yes. Hi, sorry. I'm Maria's daughter. I was hoping her to um, connect with the Zoom. She's unfamiliar with the Zoom, so. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay, if you'd like to make a, a brief presentation, this is a return to the Zoning Board of Appeals. This is uh, uh, 598 North Main Street. So basically the objective here is that you were denied by the Zoning Board of Appeals. You need to be familiar with what was written in the decision because what you need to come before us tonight to convince us is that, that you have some new and different material that, that would cause us to send you back to the Zoning Board of Appeals in less than two years. That's in the law, that's not our rule, that's in the state, that's in the state zoning code. So uh, what, is it that, what is it that you have that you've submitted or what is it that you can explain to us that is new and different Using using the zoning board's decision as your guide, uh, that you can that you uh, that you have us send you back to the zoning board. Uh, and if the applicant um, doesn't have the site plan available, I will I will put it up on the on the screen for you if you don't mind. Is that all right? Are you going to speak for your mother? Um, well, she you can basically explain it to them at least. Um, what the plan is now, right? Yeah, yeah. She can, she can, oh, she is. can explain the new plan. Okay. okay. Um, well, I am looking at a mixed use with it with a commercial on the bottom and um, two apartments on top. And um, I was denied because there was no um, because of the egresses, which we um, we had the fire escape on one side, and then those were stolen. And then was replaced, but then when um, I was denied because those fire escape were over leaning over the the neighbor's property. So basically, the new revised plan is that we're building. We will be building the deck on the other on the opposite side. The deck will be um, extended all the way around to have a second way of egress. So that's basically the new plan. Okay. Um, did you? Department. 
So this is so this is basically this is basically a two-story building. You've got a you've got a you've got a what is it a florist shop on the first floor? Yes. And then you've got two apartments on the second floor. Yes. Okay. And how does how does that right? Okay, I'm just reading. I'm just reading. Did you get? Did you get? You must have. You sent one in. You had a copy of the zoning's decision. Did you get? You have a, a copy of the zoning board's decision. The when I went when I went last, I have that somewhere. Okay. Well. Again, you, you heard my explanation as to how you get back to the zoning board, right? Because I'm reading from the zoning board's decision. The zoning board said, the, the board found no hardship demonstrated at the locus. Uh, it said that you that you had unaccessible egress. Uh, right. and it said, granting it said granting of the mixed use. If you have if you have a commercial venture on the bottom floor, and then you've got residential on the second floor, that's called a mixed use. It says granting of the mixed use occupancy would derogate from the intent of the zoning bylaws and will will negatively impact the orderly development of the neighborhood. That suggests to me that if you went before the zoning board again, they're going to tell you the same thing again. You don't have a hardship and they're and they're they're discouraging you from the mixed use. That's what they that's what the that's what the written decision said. So you're doing essentially the same thing. You're not changing anything. A change to me would be if you if you quit the if you if you quit the the mixed use, I, I don't know, you'd, you'd need an attorney to help you with a hardship, but if you quit the mixed use, at least you'd be you'd be how can I say you'd be you'd be coming in more into compliance with the zoning board's wishes. They denied you for specific reasons and, and you haven't altered those. You haven't made any alterations to the reasons that they denied you. Well, yes, you've made some changes to the plan, but you you haven't addressed the, the theory of the of the denial of the zoning board's decision. Well, the, the denial was because of the the egresses, which we didn't have, we don't have, we didn't have egresses coming from the second floor. And we're adding, um, so the 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 deck is going to be extended all the way around the building. So it's going it's going to be egresses for each apartment, two egresses. That's basically what they were looking for. Well, they're that's looking, they're, well, they did mention they did mention that. Yes, you're correct. But but as equally as important, they said you didn't have a hardship for a variance, and they also said that. That, that mixed use was not allowed and they said that they in their opinion that they that they would not support mixed use so even though you've made some changes to your plan and in your opinion you've improved your egresses you still have a mixed use did you did you read the zoning decision yes i did that's why i was told to go to planning board with any to try to go back to the zoning board. Well, I mean, that's my, those are my comments. Uh, well, I, I'm reading that it was denied from going from a one to a two apartment unit. I mean, is this two apartments now or one? Because well, he's got they've got the bottom floor, the entire bottom floor is a commercial venture. It's going to be some type of a, a florist business. Then the right. top is yeah. two the separate second. apartments. But well, the thing, the thing is, sorry to interrupt you. Um, the thing is, it used, it, it, it was, it was, I guess, supposedly many years ago, one big apartment, which my mom, when she bought the, the property, was two. So I guess they dug deep into like the history of the building, and it says that it was only one apartment. So that's where the dilemma is. So my mom's trying to, you know, fix this. And she was under the impression that it just needs two exits because of the situation. So that's why I think the confusion is. So that's why she's gotten she's gotten the site plan of the two exits there. So I don't know if there's like a confusion. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. 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 Larry. 
mentions egress, but it's it, it does clearly state. Do, do the other board members have a copy of the decision? Anytime we do one of these return to the zoning board, you need to have a copy of the zoning board's decision. Okay, they didn't ask me for that. Mr. Chair, I have a question yeah. too. No yeah. one asked us for that. Yeah, I didn't know we um, needed that in front of us here. How what we weren't told that we needed this. What you what you needed, what you probably could have used, you don't have to, but what you caught it could have used is the is the is the assistance of a lawyer, is the assistance of an attorney. You're not required. To. They had an attorney the first time, Mr. Chair. They were attempting to do this themselves this time. Well, I had an yes. attorney and um the attorney didn't do anything for us. Um and now we're left without an attorney and, and we're trying to attempt to do this ourselves going forward. Did you have a question, Mr. Hassan? Yes, um, is, the, is the current use, are there two apartments on the second floor currently or no? I bought the property as a two apartment and it's still a two apartment, but it's not, no one lives there now okay. because you know, of the situation. Right. So, there's everything, you know, two apartments, two meters, two gas meters, electrical, right. everything. Say, just for clarity, when you say that it's two apartments, the, the, in the city's eyes, there's one apartment on each floor. No, this is a, a second floor, Chairman. Second floor. So on the second floor, Mr. Chair, it, it, it looks to me like there's there were two existing apartments, a one bedroom and a two bedroom, but I don't believe there were proper egresses. And I saw a note somewhere too, even with the new proposed egresses, I think it came from Chief Williams, um, the second egress out of the front unit bedroom, it can't share the same staircase. I'm not sure about that, but um, I'm just trying to clarify what the current use of the building is now. No, the there used to be, I'm sorry to interrupt you. There used to, there, there used to be a fire escape is still there. The fire escape I purchased with the house. Right. So they, there's two Those fire Those are the escapes. middle fire, fire escapes out of the windows, correct? Correct, correct. Mm -hmm. they, were, they were always there. So basically because that's not acceptable, those fire escape coming out of the window, they, 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 they two, they're only 22 inches um, wide. So that's not accepted. It was not accepted by the by the building department. So basically, on this revised, the deck that's on the opposite side is going to go around, as you can see on the on the drawing. It's going to go around the windows, okay, all around the, the side of the building, um, all the way coming towards the front, and that's going to be the second way of egress. So each each apartment has two. Two independent egresses. Yes. Yes. Oh, what? And, and what? When you how long? How long ago did you buy the building? Back in um, 19, um, 90, 95. And when you bought the building, ma'am, did you did you do a did you have someone do what was a, called a legal use before you bought it? Well, I bought it from, from the bank, attorneys, and everything, but. Back in, I, I guess back then, and with the real estate from Brockton, um, that's all the information they gave me. I mean, I have a packet on the, I mean, they had- so what, what's, been on, what's been on the first floor since 1995? What has been on the first floor all this time? A store. There was a, a store. Building. There was a, a store. It was a, it was a, a gift shop before. I wonder, then I'm, I, to, I, guess I'm, I guess I'm totally confused because I'm, I'm confused by the zoning board's comment that, that a mixed use uh, granting of the mixed use occupancy would derogate from the intent of the zoning bylaws and, 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 and negatively impact the orderly development of the neighborhood when you're telling us that it's been a mixed use for 25 well, years. Oh, yeah. Mr. Chairman? Yes. yes, sir. Yes, it has. Um, I believe what's happened is that at, at one time, this property was commercial on the first floor and had a, uh, a single apartment on the second floor. Mm -hmm. at, at some time in history, that changed and, and there were then two units up there. Now that probably happened illegally. I'm not saying that the applicants had done that, but we have a history of Brockton of things just 
happening overnight. So she may have purchased two apartments, uh, a, a, a two units, a building with two units on the first, on the second floor. Excuse me. It's, that's why uh, I asked my question. That, after that point, though, uh, the units went vacant, and the zoning uh, board and the building department are saying that to reestablish that use, which has expired because it became nonconforming, and the nonconformity had been vacated for over two years, according to the building department, they need to reestablish that use. And so they came to the zoning board seeking uh, to reestablish a two unit building, uh, two residential units on the second floor. And that's what the zoning board turned down. Okay, I got you. So in other words, they lost over time because of lack of use, lack of consistent use, they lost that two apartment legal use. Correct. They lost the legal use of the two apartments. And so one of the things that they're apparently looking for is to, is to reestablish the legal use on the second floor. Yes. yes. Okay, well, I mean, they're sending you back to the zoning board to establish that? They're saying, they're, saying that, they're saying that in their opinion, even though you'd like to reestablish it, that, that they're saying that they're not, they're not in favor of that. In addition to the fact you don't have a hardship, they're saying, again, I, 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 I direct your attention to the to the, to the to the to the verbiage in the in the decision, granting of the mixed use occupancy would derogate from the intent of the zoning bylaws and would would negatively impact the orderly development of the neighborhood. The, the zoning board, I, I don't want to speak for them, but it sounds to me like after deliberation, they're not going to grant you that. That you had that you you've asked you've asked for the granting of the mixed use use at your site. Uh, apparently, by the sound of the the tone in the in the basis that they wrote, uh, they're not going to grant that. Well, they were asking. That's, that's going to be your biggest problem. I appreciate that you put some work into, you know, re redesigning or upgrading your your egresses, but that alone, I don't think, based on the fact you don't have a hardship, and based on the fact that they're that that that, that, that they are very discouraging of your mixed use, I don't know how far you're going to go. So my my hardship is that I bought the property as a two family, okay, and you we used it for years as a two family upstairs, and then my fire escape was stolen, okay. Once it was stolen, I had to replace it, and then by replacing it, I was told that it's not that you know it's not acceptable because of the length of the fire escape. So that's, I don't I don't I mean I think that that's something that needs to be taken care of as the owner, but I don't see that's not a hardship. Hardship is, oh, I don't want to get too in the weeds here. Hardship is determined on a zoning case in the zoning, in the, in the zoning code, in chapter 40A, section six, it, it's very specific of what constitutes a hardship and, and a, a, a missing or a damaged fire escape does not qualify for that. I don't know, board members, any, any thoughts that are here? No, I, I, I un unfortunately, I feel bad, but I agree with you, Mr. Chair. I mean, there's two issues here. The zoning board is, is not in agreement with two units upstairs. And then if, if you consider going back to one unit, that would be a substan substantial change. Right, but they had offered, uh, um, they gave us two, um, another opinion as well um, to build a, uh, a sprinkler system as well as the egresses. Um, as an option as well. So I don't, I don't, that's why we're confused. I mean, so I thought that- need, maybe... You know what, again, here again, because we're, I don't want to belabor this. We have a very long agenda. So, uh, you know, I think we've heard pretty much all of the details. Um, if you were, if you were going to establish a hardship, your hardship should have been at that zoning meeting because you, you don't, your, your hardship, the element of hardship when it comes to a variance, um, that should have been well established at your first appearance at the zoning board, um, in my opinion, I mean I wasn't at the meeting, and this is the planning board, not the zoning board. But well, I don't, the I meeting don't see, I had, I don't but, see in a, it, it, I don't see, to me, as being open-minded and fair as I can. I just don't see the basis. You haven't established the basis for a return to the zoning board. 
in my opinion. Uh, Mr. Palashi? Yes, sir. I would like to say uh, something. Councillor ASAC would like to address the board. Okay. Good evening, board. I'm Shirley Azak, Ward 7 City Councilor. And um, I was not contacted by the applicant this evening, but I, I was on the meeting for another uh, project in the ward. But I just want to let you know, uh, Chairman Pelagi, I was at the zoning board meeting that Ms. Flores presented this to. And uh, there may have been some sort of miscommunication because I do also remember the board giving her suggestions about um, the different, the, what she could do with the fire escape and the easement. So I'm not sure what you can do about it this evening, but there were suggestions made by the zoning board for her to make changes for what looks like she's done this evening with the plans that she's presenting. Um, so I'm not sure what you can do. I don't know if you can postpone it till we, you get more information from the zoning board, but. I would hate to see this get denied when the zoning board did give these, some of these suggestions. Well, I mean, you could, uh, I don't know if, if you, if you, if we were to continue it, I don't know if you could get clarification just by going up to the building department. I don't know if there's anybody there that's going to speak in behalf, maybe the, well, the building, I suppose you may be able to speak to the building commissioner, maybe. Um, I, I, I mean, my suggestions instead of just denying it, could you postpone it for her or we, uh, until we, it's clarified or continue? Members? Her second attempt so that if, if you were to deny this um, at this time, they have to wait the remainder of the two years. So we and can continue, it, correct? I, I would recommend continuing if that's what the yeah. board would like to do. However, I would like, and I don't mean to throw him under the bus, but uh, Deputy Chief Williams, uh, there is a, an issue about the fire escape or e egress. And uh, I was wondering if you'd like to address that or I can give my best. Sure, no, I, I'll address it, no problem. Um, it's my understanding of the building code that that second egress that's out of the front apartment, um, out of the bedroom of the front apartment right there, that can't use the same stairway as the other egress, which is right there, Rob, right. So I, I think they have to have independent stairways. So what I would suggest the applicant do between now and the next meeting is confer with the building commissioner what he thinks of those plans before you come back here, because I, I think that's an issue. I think you need an independent second stairwell out of the front apartment. Can you, Rob, just, can you, since you've got your, thank you for posting that. Can you show where the, sh the shared stairway is for the, for the separate egresses? Where, where is the- So this oh, is right the there. shared stairway it goes to unit two and it goes to unit one. <laughs> oh, unit two so has know. an exit out here Unit one, you exit out the bedroom across a, a balcony and you use the same staircase here. So if there were a fire here, I have no way out of this unit now. You know, it's, you know, it's this disappointing. This was done by an architect. That plan was done by, I forget, mm -hmm. I forget uh, who it was, but that plan, I see, what you, I see your point. They're sharing a stairway is, well, yeah, is this, can't share the stairway. Yeah. Yeah. Does the applicant understand that? Yep, you yes. can't do that. No, nope. thank you, uh, Chief Williams. Um, so does that, if it, does that type of, Chief Williams, while we have you there, so other than, in other words, if they could modify that, does, is that, is that egress solution, like an open stairway like that, is that acceptable? Yes, it is. Okay, well, I mean, all right. Um, you've got some, okay. Okay, you've got some, it looks like to me, you've got some, you've got some work to do to, to modify the plan. There's two things you've got to do that you should have learned in this exercise. You've okay. got to get clarification on, on, on what the, zonings, the zoning decision, the, the implication of the zoning, de, the zoning decision, what the implications of that written decision is. And you, okay. you can do that maybe by going up to the building department. Okay. And you also got to modify these plans if you hope 
to be successful with these plans, okay. you've got to split those two egresses. You can't share the stairway. Do you understand those two points? Yes, yes, I will go see Mr. Mr. Pluff there at the building. Mr. Who? But isn't it Mr. Pluff? Oh, Mr. Pluff, yes, yes. Pluff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I met with him before. I, I know who right. he is. It, it also sounds like, according to Council Sacker, we need more clarification too, because we're receiving conflicting information here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, she's saying that she was there for the last zoning board meeting and suggestions were made and nothing was mentioned about being an issue with the two apartments on the second floor. Mm -hmm. But in what I'm reading is that there's an issue with that and the egress. So um, I don't know who's gonna get that additional information for us, but we need that as well. Okay, well, um, did someone, no, wait a minute, this is a public hearing, so um, I think we've heard, we've discussed it enough. I think we know enough of the background, enough of the details. Uh, at this time, Mr. May, do you have anybody that wants to speak? Uh, anybody who would like to speak, um, who is an attendee, please raise your hand. We will unmute you and move uh, and, and allow you to discuss this case. Thank you so much. Please, again, raise your hands. And I do not see anyone raising their hand. And with that, I would, you know, it, it at the board's pleasure, but uh, would think that recommending uh, it to the date certain March meeting, March 2nd. Mm -hmm. March is, that, is that enough time? Is that enough time for you, ma'am? Yes, I'm gonna meet, meet um, with the billing department. And that's enough time to have possible. the meeting and then to revise your plan. Yes, yes, I'm gonna do all of that. Okay, and then do understand please that even if you revise your plans, uh, you know, until we meet and look at what you have and discuss it, it's not an absolute guarantee that you're, I want you to understand, it's not necessarily a guarantee that you're gonna be sent back to the zoning board. Because you've got okay. other issues that, please and, and get a copy of the zoning decision and read it. Yes, thank you. Okay. Mr. Mr. Chairman, if I, I, I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not giving you advice, um, but the, the ruling from the zoning board said, you have no hardship, which in and of itself could be a dead, is, is a dead stop. But then they went on to say other things. Yes. And changing those other things doesn't necessarily mean, you know, this is the most important one is the mm -hmm. hardship. Yeah, that's so the way if you I, could, if you could address the hardship through your through an attorney, uh, I, I, I've said may that, help. That's what I said in my open. That's that was my that was my strongest concerns with this. The fact that you don't have a hardship, you, you, you're not. The fact that you didn't have one at the time you were there, and it doesn't sound like you have one now, and you and and, and that, that that in their in their in their, in their opinion, they they were opposed to a mixed use. Those are huge things. I'm well, to I'm gonna call. I'm going also to contact my attorney who was on this case before, because okay. I mean he he actually worked on this. I paid a lot of money to have for him to do everything. So, but nothing. I mean, I'm 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 at the, still at the same way when I first started. So well, you, you, see you what, might. What, he was supposed to have a hardship. I mean, he's supposed to help me with this hardship. Yes, he is. So well. you might want to divide this into you. You meeting with the building inspector and getting details on what, on what the egress is, and then, and yes. then have him take a look at what is a, what is a what is a an acceptable hardship, oh. and um, overcoming the the mixed use comment that the zoning board made because you're going to get that's going to come up again. I guarantee you the zoning board has all the notes on this, and when you come before them again, the file is going to be fresh in front of them, and it's going to be right there. So okay. anyway, I, we I think we've covered this enough, would someone like to make a motion? I'll make a motion to continue to March 2nd. Second. Okay, there's been a motion made to continue to March 2nd. Um, and uh, let's see, we need a, a vote. It was seconded by uh, Larry. Yes. So we need a vote on the roll call. Uh, Reggie Thomas? Yes. Larry Hassan? Yes. Uh, Tony Gonzalez? Yes. Bob Pelagi is a yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Stay safe.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Want to go back to Scott? Let's go back to Scott. <sighs> okay. Scott's a pro at this. How come we can't hear you? Is he there? There we go. There he is. Oh, oh there he is. All right. It, it was a very technical issue. <laughs> I didn't have the camera plugged in. <laughs> oh. Stop, being such a, stop being a newbie. Oh, man. This isn't easy. <laughs> All right, you're up. All right. Sweet. Great. Uh, thank you, folks. Scott Farrier from Holmgren Engineering, uh, representing SNE LLC at 863 Belmont Street. Uh, it's the site of the old Chinese restaurant on Belmont Street that's been vacant for a couple of years. Uh, Scott, we do you have anybody else with you? I do not. Okay, because I know there's two Nezarellas and I didn't know whether one might be one of your clients. No, it is not. Uh, it, it, actually, it, it, it could be one of them. Uh, one of the owners could be there. Either John or Beverly or George. If you're, if you're part of this case, please raise your hand. And we'll move you into the panelist. You know, it, it looks like it's one is Phil. Phil, it looks like it's Phil twice then. Okay. Let's have a chance of him screwing up if there's two connections for him. So, uh, not that I should talk. Anyways, we went to tech review in October, uh, had a few changes to make, nothing all that major. We added some curbing at the rear of the parking lot. Uh, we shifted a catch basin in the parking lot as suggested by the city engineer. Uh, Conservation Commission, recently we filed with them. They wanted us to extend the siltation protection and also eliminate a note uh, regarding some clearing. So we've made those changes. Uh, what our proposal is, is to uh, take the existing building at 863. Uh, we're going to raise the uh, newer section of the building and keep the original uh, portion of the building, about 3,000 square feet as the sales office uh, for SNE's uh, future car dealership at this location. We went to the Board of Appeals. Uh, they granted the variance for, uh, for this plan. We've updated the utilities. We have a new drainage system. Right now, there is no drainage on the site. We've updated that. We have a new drainage system. Uh, Everything else conforms to your regs. We received a uh, review this morning from the planning department and we have one small issue, I think. We have the entrance coming off of Belmont Street. We don't quite have it at 24 feet. It looks like it's about a 20 foot entrance. Uh, so we need to revise that entrance to 24 feet. In doing so, we will lose one space. So we'll have uh, 66 spaces instead of the 67 that we have right now. Uh, so we'd like the opportunity to make that change, get that before the board. Thank you, Rob. Uh, and in the meantime, also, we were in the process of uh, going through the approval uh, process with Conservation Commission. Uh, we expected that would have got uh, taken care of at their January meeting, but they did not have a quorum. So we're back before the Conservation Commission on the 17th, I believe it is, uh, for their approval. So I think, uh, and seeing the planning department's comment and still waiting for the uh, the conservation to sign off on the project. Uh, I think we'd like to continue until your March meeting, Mr. Chairman. Okay, that sounds reasonable. Uh, would you, you, would you uh, be willing to entertain a curiosity question? Certainly. Why is it about a construction is, entrance? Well, I'm sorry? Is it about a construction entrance? You mean a stabilized construction exit? That's the one. Oh, don't egg them on. <laughs> well, th there's that. But the why why is this site so so dense with a, with parking spaces? Do you absolutely need? I mean, every one of those. It, it's so tight that if it, it's a is it a used car? So it's a used car dealership. That's correct. So you've got it says you've got uh, free customer parking. Is there any is there any repair on the site, Scott? None at all. That was one of the conditions. Uh, SNE has a site up the street. 
that's been before you folks uh, in the last year or two that they're adding on a couple of bays to it. So the plan is they do all the repairs offsite at, at that location, at their Belmont Street location. It was specifically stated in the granting of the variance that no repairs would be done at this site. Okay, I'm just curious. I mean, I, if I, I probably, I'm just so, it, it just seems, I mean, if you were a customer there, you'd almost be worried about your car, wouldn't you? I don't know, it just seems so dense, but anyway. Well, I mean, the, the customer parking is up front with regular spaces and regular travel way. It's the, uh, the car, the for sale cars are in the back in that dense location, as you said. Right, and, and, oh, and Scott, and is this know, customer parking down here? Yes, sir. Okay. Oh, is that, so, how do you get, but uh, spot 62 is being blocked by spot 67. Right, the, the customer parking is, uh, is spaces 61 and 67. Right there, those two spaces that Rob has. And then again, 62 through 66 being the, the spaces right up in the front, those would be uh, the used car spaces to show the cars right on Belmont Street. Oh, those are your best items? Exactly. <laughs> I was wondering how you're going so to you get have two, those, are your, those are your showcase items, uh, Scott? That would be it, Mr. Chairman. What's the total number that the license is going to permit? Uh, or do you have it, a license yet? It would be 58. Uh, I, we do not have a license yet. I don't believe it would be 58. And then uh, losing this one space would, would get it down to 57. Now, if you lose number 66, is it a deal breaker? No. Uh, board members, any comments? So, uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may, uh, so you have two customer parking spaces. Where do the employees park? The employees the of these spaces are. Yep. Um, the employee spaces are. Sale. There you go. They're up on Linus Ave, right there. Yep. Right where you okay. handle. There you go. Now, will some of these? But some of these are in the same numbering scheme as your license request. So you you have fifty eight uh, that you're requesting licenses for, right? Two yeah. of which are customers, and I don't know how many are. Well, this has to stay open, so that's another three that is is a customer space, uh, and two or three employee parking. Yeah, I, I didn't specify exactly spaces one through 58 being sales, but I, I could do that on the revised plan just to make it clearer. Do you have, yeah, because, does this parking lot have access to Linus Avenue, Scott? No. It does. It does not? It it, it does, there's no, although there's we're not. No we're, there. Yeah, but we're how, not using how it. Would someone, how does, uh, you know what I'm missing? Can you just take me quickly with your little cursor there? Yep. How does somebody go from Belmont Street to the employee parking space and then back out of it? All okay. the way up, you've got a 24 foot wide travel way. Across the back, again, you've got a 24 foot travel way. And then where the employee parking is, you have a 31 foot travel way. So I come in here. Yep. Drive and then come in here. And like I said, it's a, it's a 31 foot travel way at that location. It's obviously wider than normal. And everything else is 24 except at the entrance, which we need to change. And do you, do you I mean, so do you meet, do you, I'm sure you do, you probably, you meet green, minimum green space requirement, right? Yeah, we've got, uh, we've got 25%, the whole back of it is green space. There's a whole bunch of green space, actually. Are you going to green up anything in the front or on the sides or anything? Uh, yeah, we have landscaping. Uh, the front is a bioretention area, so there's a, a little bit of landscaping involved with that. And then along the right-hand side, along Linus Ave, uh, the right-hand side of the building, there's landscaping. And then in the back right-hand corner of the, uh, of the parking lot, there is also landscaping. And then just the natural vegetation in the back. It's wooded in the back already.
Wow, it's so dense. Um, I mean, it's all it's all existing parking. We're not adding any paving at all. It's all there. That's yeah. all. Uh, Exi you know, mm -hmm. the existing parking lot for the restaurant. We're not adding anything, Mr. Chairman. If anything, we're actually taking out a little bit by doing the bio retention area in the front uh, and adding a little bit of landscaping alongside of the building. But can you, can you, could you, can you humor us and, and, and improve on the, on, on some of the vegetation? Because it is on Bel brand new Belmont Street and it is all of those properties up and down there, Scott. Uh, you know, all of those properties that we just had one before you that um, they're doing another gas station and they're doing extensive. Mm. I expect it to be a thing of beauty. They're doing extensive uh, vegetating there. I mean, that's. I, yeah, we. I mean, I, I, I guess you, I guess if, if you're complying with, I'm just asking that. Of no, I, we, we can, I'm sure George and Beverly would be happy to do more, Mr. Chairman, in the front, uh, you know, right at the, right at the front, we can do more. There's. Uh, as I said, a bioretention area, but right in front of the building, there is uh, there's room there to do some landscape, and I will add that to the plan. I appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, again, if you. If, if you look up, if you look yeah. up up and down the street, you've done some of those, and you see what some of the new the new current day development has as far as greening up the green space, and it's a, it, they, they, these these commercial sites look beautiful. So anything you could do, uh, in fact, if you you're coming back with a modification, if you could. In addition to modifying the 24 foot wide minimum entrance, and then you know add, do you make your best effort to add some vegetation there? It would be greatly appreciated. We will do that. And you said, did you have a stabilized construction exit? We do on sheet C4, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Uh, comments about on the part of the board? Nope. Um, just con he wants to continue it, so maybe it's a public hearing. Anybody in raising their hand? Yeah. Uh, well, we got anybody wishing to speak, please raise your hand using the raise your hand function, or if you're more comfortable typing um, your questions, we can also do it that way. And seeing none, um, Mr. Chairman, I see no hands raised. All right, I think we have uh, an agreement here, so uh, we will continue. I guess we'll continue the next meeting. Is okay, Scott? Yes, sir, please. Okay, fine. So would someone like to make a motion to continue this site plan approval to, to the next meeting with the with the revisions as discussed? Make a motion to continue the site plan to the next meeting with the revisions discussed. I'll second, second that. Okay, so we've got a motion and a second to continue. Uh, a vote by roll call, Larry Hassan? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. Reggie Thomas? Yes. And Bob Pelagi is a, is a yes. Thanks, guys. Thank Welcome. you. See you later. Yeah, I'll be here, I hope. <laughs> no promises. Keep your camera we plugged will. in. <laughs> 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 All right, so we move, we're moving right along to what, number six? Yes. Another you know CBA what? return, those are good. All Could right. you raise your hand? The applicant? Oh. John has moved in and I'm moving in. I move. Francesca. Move Scott out. Hello, everybody. There you go. Okay. <clears throat> You're up, John. Well, I think we're, we, we might be waiting for Bill Self. I just got off the phone with him. Um, this is the uh, Augusta State's uh, property. No. no. This is Malat. Owned by Fred Hepshe. No, this no, no. Is wrong, wrong one, John. We're not there yet. <laughs> we're on number, we're on uh, return to this, a ZBA. Oh, I, did I miss that? I'm sorry. Just tell me to shut up. Shut up. We would never do that, John. <laughs> you can just hang on there until, because you'll be up after that. Oh, no. So it's it's one millet. Millet. Yeah, Francesca. Yes. Okay, and then oh, you're right. up. <laughs> Thank you. Is there anybody else that's? There's a bill. Is that Bill Self? 
that's Bill Self. All right. So, uh, okay. Bill, I'll hold you until the next topic. All right, Francesca. Okay. Thank you. Good evening to the board. How are you? I am. I'm here today with the planning board because uh, I currently have a multifamily that happens to be located in the C2 zone. Um, I did go to the building department when I purchased the property and um, it's an existing three family or was when I purchased it according to public records in the assessor's office. Uh, so I went to the building department and I applied for a permit to rehab the property. Um, I was denied the permit, but recommended to go to the zoning board of appeals um, to, and this was because it was vacant for two years. So it lost its use. It was no longer, um, it lost its non-conforming use. So I did apply to the zoning board of appeals um, and I was denied for a couple of reasons. I know that they were concerned about lack of parking and also, um, or, or actually they were concerned about, yes, lack too much parking and not enough green space. Um, so what the recommendation was at that time was that maybe a two family was better suited for that area. So I have um, changed and modified the plans and now I'm returning to the ZBA with a two family uh, dwelling. Okay. Um... Good evening. Good evening. Uh, okay, so I'm reading, I'm reading the zoning board's decision, and the, the zoning board says the board found that the current vacant structure located in the C2 zone is in a dangerous, unsafe, abandoned condition that has been deemed to be, um, I guess it's a revision, repeat the dangerous and unsafe condition as as declared by the board of survey, as described in a letter from the city of Brockton building department dated J January the 27th, 2020. You must, be in, you must be in possession of that letter, ma'am, right? I am, so I did. So let me, let me, now let me just finish, oh. let me just finish my thought. Sure. It further says, the building department has ordered the building to be demolished. I mean, does that concern you? Absolutely, I have addressed the concerns with the building inspector and I. what I was asked to do was to secure the eaves at the um, of the structure and also to board up all of the windows and secure the property, which I have done since the time that that letter was, um, you know, since I was notified. So the, the lot is the lot is a the lot is a forty three thirty six square feet, right? Yes. I'm just curious. So, so what what is the legal determination of the what is the legal use as far as the as far as the assessor's office is concerned? What is the legal use of the building right now without any variances or relief? So it's it's a, currently a three family, but at some point the zoning uh, on Millet Street on the right hand side of Millet Street was converted into a commercial was converted to C two. Right, but but every every piece of property in the city has has a what is called a legal use. As a three, as Mr. Family. May said, as Mr. May said, in another hearing, sometimes things mysteriously get expanded, things to seem to grow. But every building in the city has a legal use. So I'm asking you if you know what is the legal use. Does the does the does the planning department know what the legal determination of the building is? What is the legal use of the building? Is it a, is a legal two family? Are you asking myself or yes, the board? If you, if you know that. Oh, yes, it's it's a three family. It's as a, you know, as a, according to the assessor's oh. office and according to public record, it is a three family. Assessors don't determine the, um, le the legal use of a building. They only assess for what they see. So if oh, you understood. No boxes on your building. Oh, so who, who makes who a six makes family? Building, who makes legal use determinations? Building, the building building department. Oh, it's the building. Okay, I'm sorry, the building department. So my curiosity question is, if you are a legal three, okay, 
and you predated zoning in your illegal three, what is it that you need relief from the Zoning Board of Appeals for? Why can't you just rehabilitate the building in its own footprint? What I was told that's, is that's, that your, that's your right to do that. It is. What I was, what I'm understanding is that because the property prior to me owning it, it was vacant for a certain amount of time. Right. So when I did purchase it, it had been sitting for two years and it lost its non-conforming it was non-conforming. It lost its use as a okay. three-family. That part I did not understand. I thought it was in use. Okay, so the it lost because of the zoning that it's in. It lost its it lost its non-conforming use. Exactly. It lost yes. its non-conforming use because you quit the use. You are our predecessor quit the use. Okay, I get it. All right. right. But it's it is you know I would like to make it clear that I have not abandoned the building in any way. I. You know, obviously, no, no, the, the term is abandon the use. I know you didn't abandon the building. Oh, yes. Yeah, no, so I mean, I'm actively trying to, use. right, um, I'm actively trying to obtain a, a, a permit um, from the building department. I'm, I'm looking to comply uh, with, you know, whatever their wishes are. You know, I, I do not want it to sit there in disrepair. I did try to see if I could work something out where I could at least secure and put on a roof, but, you know, they ultimately decided that, you know, they would like me to just go back to zoning and um, and it would be better suited for a two family is what I'm being told. And, and again, you're not concerned that there was an order to, to demolish the building? Oh, I am concerned. I did reach out to the building department and what I was told is to secure the property as best I could, including the eaves, which I have done uh, so that it's, and I also had a you know, a general contractor look at the property, a structural engineer has reviewed the property and determined that, you know, it is, it's not coming down at any time soon, but I would like to obtain a permit. She's and... Somehow we can't, we lost her. Oh. No, she's there. Okay. Uh, I would, I would like to uh, obtain a permit and go ahead and, you know, renovate the property if possible. Um, maybe, uh, Mr. May knows, does this building have to be demolished or can it, can it be refurbished to a two family? Um, hang on a second. I'm trying to find uh, Councilor Nicastro. I'm going to move her into the panelist. This is her award. Um, it, it is pretty well gutted out um, right now, and um, it probably could be salvaged um, as a two unit. Uh, one of the issues that the department has is that uh, the applicant wishes to add a dormer to really convert what was basically an, an attic into a, uh, a new living area that is roughly the size of, of half the house. Um, and um, not saying that the applicant is gonna do this, but in Brockton, those kind of things tend to get converted later on into um, additional apartments. So we need to be wary of that. Um, I'm gonna put the plan up if you don't mind. I realize that um, the applicant had not had a chance to do that. And am I looking at the first floor? Oh, thank or you. So here is, let me. Uh, oops. So here is the existing building. Um, this is an addition that the applicant is looking to do to provide a second level of egress, typically a a house like this would have had a, a balcony. And um, this is the second floor. Again, this is the addition uh, to provide uh, additional egress. 
And then this is a dormer that the applicant wishes to add to the property to create a master bedroom, walk-in closet, and bath. And then um, this is the, the area of that dormer that she wants to add, just FYI. And then this is the addition, which I can't tell if that's indoor or outdoor exposed that, to the weather. Am I, am I unmuted? That is actually a port. Those are uh, egresses, so a porch, essentially. Okay, so that's out. Okay, thank you. So, so what are the what are the major changes? What what are the things that would, what are the changes that would have you going back to the zoning board? So, the original plans that present were presented were a three-family structure. This is now a two-family structure with more green space as requested, and also, um, you know, because we've eliminated some of the parking you know, because you need a certain amount of parking spaces if you are going to have a three family. So we are now downsizing to a two family. We are no longer um, having uh, that enclosed addition that he spoke of with the egress. It'll just be, um, you know, an outdoor egress, which is essentially porches <clears throat> with stairs. Uh, one thing I did want to add is that the third floor does not have a second egress. It will not be used um, as a separate living space. I just wanted to clarify that it would be uh, combined with the second floor unit. So that's just simply a bedroom, a closet and a bathroom. To why make does, use. So those, yes, just okay. to clarify. Yeah, why does, so why does, I mean, your, your lot is so small, you've got, you, you're creating two, three bedroom apartments. Why does that second floor apartment need a master bedroom? What, uh, what I believe is that when you do have that additional um, space, I mean, essentially for a two family, you're probably going to have an owner occupied individual there. Um, and, you know, I'm sure that they would appreciate the extra space on the third floor. That was my thinking when it came down to the plans. Th you know, that so makes the that, second, I'm sorry. Third floor. That makes this second apartment a four bedroom or a three bedroom? Four it bedroom. would then be a four bedroom, yes. Okay. That's, that's, to me, that's, that, that is over development. I mean, my goodness. Well, it, it looks like the space is there available. <clears throat> yes, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yes, yes. It's very common today that in these, what we call two and a half story colonials, that the second and third floor get combined into one like townhouse unit. Um, it, it's extremely common to be able to make more bedrooms. Um, to uh, answer Tony's question, anything can be fixed if you have enough money. Uh, they took out both stairways in this property. The front stairway that they built is built without a foundation. That's going to have to be all reconstructed right now. Uh, the gables are just hanging on. Um, and it, I sent an email today. I don't know if Pam passed it on, but uh, back uh, about a month or so ago, there were large holes um, being created in the foundation. I'm not sure what really did that. But if you have enough money, you can fix up just about anything. The one thing I, I just noticed looking at the floor plan, the new proposed floor plan with the new outdoor stairway, um, that's in a different location than what is shown on the plot plan. Or is there another plot plan that shows the new location of the new exterior stairway? I, I don't know. Uh, is, did we, Francesca? Uh, I'm pulling up my individual plan right now. Yeah, the blueprints seem to show the staircase here. On the left hand side of the building. Yeah, is on that the south what side. you're looking at? It should yeah, be on the driveway it's... side. They are on the driveway side. So here's where it shows proposed stairs, 
but the architectural drawings show it about here. Are we looking at the, the correct ones for the, uh, is this the old drawing or no, the this new? Is, this is the new drawing. The new, okay. Sorry, I'm playing catch up here. Just one moment. Yeah, that's the new one. So I see proposed stair in the, looks to be in the front on the side. So there's a, a driveway to the left. Let me see, I think these are the old, I think this is the old plot plan. No, that's the new one. This is the new one? Yeah, that's the new one because it's it's got, the, old, the older one's got the uh, the six parking spaces, as you said before. This oh, is I see, yeah. Yeah, this one, is two, three, four parking four. spaces, but now, comes the question, do you have proper egresses? Do you need to have two separate egress sets of egresses? Do you have that? So there is one in the, the front of the house and there's also one on the side. There's an existing egress in the front. I don't see it on this, but there is one currently there. Yeah, there's a front stoop here, Mr. Chairman. It comes into the building, then there's an interior staircase that takes you up to the second and third floor. This staircase here takes you to the first and second floor only. Um, if, if I can, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit because I just saw something that I did not notice earlier, and I apologize. Um, this is the stoop and staircase um, on the street. And it appears that it is uh, in the into the to the right of way. Look that way. Okay. Is, is that what was built about? I yes, I believe what I'm looking at right now. I believe that was existing. Those two little stairs, but they're. On the drawings, it appears that it is jutting out into the street, but it is not. Well, according it's not to into the street, it's into the right of way. The right of way, excuse me, yes. The sidewalk, to... the sidewalk that walks through here. Yeah. If you show an aerial view, you'll see that it's was just there when it was there before she bought the property. Right. Yes, yes, it was. Okay. Well, your but engineer that, is showing it. Your engineer is showing it in the right of way, so it probably is. Uh, so um, you may Williams, need to so, fix that so it comes up in, in here, so that you don't have these two steps in the right of way because that's a trip hazard and reduces the amount of the sidewalk into the city street. Correct. Um, so, Mister, I mean, uh, Chief Williams. So that that third level that. That dormer upstairs does not need two egresses? That's correct, as long as it's contiguous with the second floor apartment. Okay. Well, any other board members have any comments? Our, uh, did the architectural plans don't match the site plan? The architectural plans do not match the site plan? Is I thought that's what I heard you discussing. Because if so, then they need to match up. Yeah, there's some tweaking that needs to be done if You're you were to grant her return. Some proportions um, there? Yeah, including the, the front steps and stoop and the uh, location of the new exterior staircase on the south side of the building needs to be uh, adjusted so that it's in its actual spot. <clears throat> okay, that makes sense. Um, are there any other, oh, I'm sorry, that's the chairman's job. Are there any board members have any questions? Mr. Chair, I don't really have any questions, but I think based on what we just reviewed, it's probably a good idea to allow this to be continued because it looks like somebody's trying to improve a property that's 
it needs it. I mean, they're, they're, the building department was calling for it to be torn down and the applicant is looking to move forward and not looking for zoning to change it to a three, but keep it as a two. Um, it looks like a lot of work, but I, I, I feel it, you know, to update the plans and, and continue and see what happens. I know we have to open this up for public hearing, but do we even have to continue it? Couldn't we consider just approving it to go back to the zoning board, but she understands about the site plans need to match for the front steps, the exterior staircase. She's gonna be pulling permits to refurb the whole building. So our city inspectors, we have to trust that they're going to only approve the construction to be safe. You can make those as conditions, um, but I think you should take public testimony first before right. we start. I think so too. Hearing. So anyone from the public, please raise your hand. I'll move you into the group. I know that Councilor Nicastro is uh, here and would like to say something also. So if there's anybody from the uh, attendees, please raise your hand. And while I'm waiting for that, uh, Councilor Nicastro, please. Proceed. I don't see anybody from the public. I think she's muted. Uh, Councillor Nicastro is muted, I think, Rob. She is in the group. She can unmute herself. I just unmuted myself, there but I can't is. seem to un I can't seem to video up myself. Not that you all want to see me necessarily. Um, I, I don't know. My buttons aren't working. Story of my life. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, in any event, good evening. My name is Susan Nicastro. I represent Ward 4. One Millet Street is located in Ward 4. And this is my fourth year representing Ward 4 on the City Council. And in this whole time, and actually in, even before I was elected, this property has been a problem in this neighborhood. And I've got many calls about this property, homeless people living there. It was, you might not be a band, but essentially no one living there. Uh, the city had to chase owners. And I could tell you there's been a succession of owners. I believe your applicant this evening is the third owner. Very interesting thing. This property would change hands and nothing would happen. And then within a year, there would be a foreclosure auction. Suddenly it's worth a little bit more and it would again change hands in another year at a foreclosure auction. And I believe that is where Ms. Elves purchased it as well. I would love to see this property rehabbed, but it's not big enough for a three family. I was at the ZBA meeting. I was pleased when it was denied. I'm not sure it's big enough for a two family. It's just a teeny weeny little lot. Best I can tell from doing some research on it, it used to be combined with the property next door, which is about the same size as this. In fact, if you look at the assessor's map, the property next door, the house that improves, it seems to encroach on the boundary of the property you're discussing right now. Um, I'm not sure there's been substantial changes made, but in my opinion, you, you have a more basic problem because as Ms. Alves mentioned, um, this was a pre-existing non-conforming use in this neighborhood. It's a C2 and by not being used as residential for more than two years, this property zoning reverted back to commercial. So this applicant needs to apply for a, a use variance in addition to applying to um, make a residential use. And I don't really see that spelled out in, in your return to zoning application. Um, I also, I don't see the substantial changes that rise to the level of sending it back in, in my opinion. So I'm very concerned about this and I wanted to give you my two cents and um, I defer to what the board does this evening. Thank you for listening. Thank you. All right, uh, is there anybody else that wants to speak, Rob? Uh, there is nobody else with their hand up, um, giving it last call and I do not see anyone else there. Okay. 
I mean, that's a point well taken. You don't, you don't even have enough area. Assuming that this was in, a, in an R2 zone, you don't have enough area for a two family. You know that, right? Uh, I think it was not enough area for a three family is what it's I was told. not enough area for two. You need 5,000 square feet for a two family. You've got 40,000. 10, you've, you've got a lot of issues here. A lot. So, um, I don't know. I, I, do, I, I did hear her, I did hear her mention, there is a house next door. It's identical to this property. Uh, so, right. that's, that's, a lot of that, that's an, that's an existing non-conforming use that's not asking for any relief. Right. I mean, it's grandfathered. You're asking, what you're asking to do is you're asking to to remake the building, the, the one that's next door isn't. So I don't know, it's an interesting well, one. All of these end up being interesting problems. Yeah, that's that gets interesting and confusing if she just wants to restore this two family instead of the three family. So um, if I could make a motion, are we ready? I'll make a, a motion to return to zoning with conditions to match up the site plans for the front steps, the exterior staircase, also the green space mentioned by um, zoning, I guess there wasn't enough green space. And if she's required to get a use variance, then add that, but that's just gets confusing to me. I'm gonna second that motion. Okay, motion's been made and seconded to uh, to go to return back to the zoning board with, with the conditions that uh, have been stated. Uh, let's see a vote on the roll call. Larry Hassan? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. Reggie Thomas? Yes. Yes. Well, I gave this one a lot of thought. I, I don't want to be the spoiler. Um, I think you've got a lot of issues there, and I think you've got a big hill to climb. Um, I'm going to give it a yes. I, my conscience tells me not to, but I'm going to give it a yes. Uh, you've got some things that you've got to address there. This is far from an ideal case. It's very problematic. But uh, just reading the zoning board's decision, you've got things to overcome there. But in any case, good luck with it. Thank you very much. Thank you to the board. Good night. Good night. Mr. Chair, can we take like a two minute break? That sounds wonderful. All right, so this is uh, agenda item uh, number eight, definitive subdivision properties at NAP 37 plots 468 Augusta Avenue and plot 36 Prospect Street. I guess it's an 18, is it an 18 lot subdivision? Is that what it comes down yeah, to? No. no, it's a 15. 15. Uh, it's been 15 knocked lot down to 15. Subdivision. All right, uh, the owner, owner is Frederick Ketchy and the uh, Representative is well. You've got a few representatives: Curly and Hanson and John uh, McCluskey. So, which one of you fine gentlemen is going to make an opening statement? Brief statement. Well, uh, never being shy, <laughs> I, I guess I will. Uh, my name is <laughs> Attorney John McCluskey, uh, representing Fred Hepshi, who has owned this property for many, many years. Um, this is a, a subdivision that was recently approved uh, preliminarily by the planning board and uh, under the new regulations uh, went to the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, for a uh, variance uh, seeking uh, approval of a um, uh, 15 lot subdivision, uh, qualifying that slightly by saying that uh, one of the lots already has a home on it, which was is uh, 100 Augusta Avenue, which is a former home of uh, Fred and Estelle Hebshi and family. Um, and then uh, one of the lots um, is a not a buildable lot uh, as a uh, detention area for drainage purposes. And uh, uh, leading into that, I will say that Bill Self has um, designed 
uh, a, a subdivision that uh, really takes into consideration all of the, the drainage issues and, and the uh, area issues. And, and we've gone over this uh, for many, 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 many months. And um, this was a subdivision that was approved many years ago uh, with much smaller lots. And I will say that um, uh, when we met uh, maybe a year or two ago to discuss uh, what would be the most appropriate use of this property, taking into consideration the, uh, the desire of the city of Brockton to have lots with larger frontage and area space, uh, this is what we came up with. So this was approved by the planning board on a preliminary basis. It went to the, the zoning board of appeals uh, not long ago, uh, back in, um, oh, I don't know, a couple months ago. Uh, and the, the decision was approved. There were no appeals taken. And we uh, uh, filed that decision with the uh, registry of deeds. And so here we are tonight uh, seeking final approval of the subdivision for, for 13 new buildable lots, uh, one existing lot uh, with a home on it. And uh, from, from there, I would give it to Bill Self, who is, uh, is, who is an expert in this area and will be able to guide us through this. All right, thank you, John. Just in Bill, if I could, if you could just give us the, only because we've seen this before and I know that there's been a lot of fine tuning. So if you can just, just give us the, the, the shortened version, we'd appreciate it. Yes, sir. I agree. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I, did I talk too long? No, 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 you oh, didn't. It's been a long night. Nope, not at all. Nope, no, no, no. I, no, no. I, I said, that, the board. I Thank said you. that relative to the length of our, of our, uh, of our long uh, agenda. Don't take it personally. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Thank you, Bob. Uh, my name is Bill Self, Curly and Hanson, preparer of the plans. Uh, just a little clarification. If, uh, if uh, Rob, if I could, uh, if we could just show the, 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 uh, uh, the plan, I, I believe it's, uh, we need uh, sheet number four on the irregular subdivision. Yeah, that's the one I'm looking at. That's, that gives you the best view. Give you uh, yeah, I, I no, that's the, the plan that's up there now is not part of the subdivision, Bob. That was an additional sheet that was submitted uh, that we had gone earlier back in uh, 2018 to the conservation. You look at the title, at the one I'm looking at. But uh, if we could, uh, if we could see uh, sheet number four of the subdivision, I'd like to start with just a little just a clarification of where we are, and then I'll get right into the major, you know, additions we've made through your review from the planning board. Okay, let me get to four. There we go. That's that's the plan. Now, just if I could, uh, if I could just uh, as a clarification. We had originally come in uh, uh, with an 18 lot subdivision and we'd listened to the, some of the concerns. We had some neighborhood meetings and we've done, you know, uh, our homework as well as listen to all the abutters and some of their, their uh, objections and, and what we thought we made the changes and, and we ended up with a, with a 15 lot submittal. Uh, just a clarification, uh, we went to the Board of Appeals. Uh, there are uh, physically 13 buildable lots that we asked under the Board of Appeals. The, 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 the other two is if you looked at number 14, uh, that is just a small lot. It's, uh, it's uh, 4,347 square feet. That was a small parcel that as an agreement to the new owners of the existing lot number 100, uh, there was a driveway there and we created just a small lot that was to be combined to be conveyed to and combined with number 100. Uh, number 100 was part was a lot of the original 1965 subdivision. That's when the subdivision was approved last with the planning board. So that was that was a uh, lot 14 was one lot and the other lot that we that we 
uh, we showed on the plans was lot four. That lot four is a lot that was created entirely just to, to you know, for the drainage purposes. There's a detention area there. And that basically takes uh, all of our drainage from cross Ave extension uh, that, uh, that you see going up towards the north. So that, that, that's what encompasses the 15 lots. Uh, when we met with the, uh, both the neighborhood meeting and, and the Board of Appeals, uh, the, most of the comments from the Board of Appeals uh, were really, uh, most of them were from the, the lots that are on the existing Augusta Ave. Uh, when, uh, and their main concern, they're very small lots, their main concerns were, you know, what type of a, you know, drainage flow was coming off the subdivision. They have their lots of, you know, wet during certain parts of the year. It actually grades from the west coming across down towards Augusta Rav. And what our res uh, resolution was is that if we could go to, Rob, if we could go to five, uh, I think 5B, Rob, if you could bring that up for us, please. Uh, if you if you see the the lots we're talking about, or the lots down the bottom of the sheet, that existing houses that are on Augusta Ave, what we've done, and uh, we have through the review of the city engineer, and and the concerns that those neighbors had, is that we've designed the uh, 30 foot drainage easement uh, that comes all the way down along the backs of the lots. And we also, uh, with some of the concerns, we've also shown as a revision that there'll be a, there'll be a six foot stockade fence uh, constructed on the property of the development that'll go along those lots that, uh, that border uh, behind on Augusta Rav. So that's a couple of the considerations that we put in certainly to get rid of any water problems that they have now from the water coming across. And we feel that uh, you know, that was a remedy to be able to resolve that. The drainage, it's, it's just an earth swale will be loomed and seeded. It's just directed down towards uh, a basin area and accessible from Augusta Rav. And, and, and there's also a, a 10 foot wide road uh, gravel drive around the detention area for access and for cleaning purposes. One other request that the uh, that even uh, we talked about at the preliminary hearing for the planning board was that uh, the city engineer had requested that we have access from the cul-de-sac area. So what we have done as well, we added to the plan that we originally submitted, and we added a 30-foot easement along the Novelly property line, that's on the uh, on the Novelly end, uh, uh, Novelly side of lot seven. That's the one at the end of the cul-de-sac. And I believe, Rob, if you could call up uh, sheet 5D, please. It gives a little bit more definition of that. Oops, I'm going the wrong direction. I meant to this one. It's 5D. Yeah, 5D as in David. There you go. Yes, that's good. And, and you can clearly see there that what we've, what we've done is put the 30 foot out of the 50, 30 foot wide uh, drainage easement with, the, with a 10 foot access gravel driveway. You know, again, on the log of the end of the lot seven from the cul-de-sac. So that, that would give the access for any cleaning that may in the future be needed to come in there. It's, uh, it's a drainage easement that'll be, you know, that'll be controlled by the association of all the people buying the lots, same as the lot, lot four, the drainage easement. So that was basically what we've done to, con you know, to answer some of the concerns that came from those neighbors on those, uh, on those five lots that, uh, you know, again, existed on Augusta Rave. As far as uh, if you, we could go back to, uh, Maybe sheet 5A, Rob. Uh, the access uh, the access comes in from Prospect Street, 
It's an existing gravel, it's, excuse me, it's an existing paved way from Prospect Street coming down Augusta until it turns out and heads out to Cross Ave, uh, which heads out to Cross Street. That is now presently constructed. It was constructed back, I'm guessing probably in the early 70s when they were working the subdivision. That's as far as they got. Uh, so that roadway is, is in the ground. Their infrastructure is there, drainage, water, uh, sewer. It's a main trunk line that goes from Prospect all the way down through Augusta right out to Earl. And, and that's part of what uh, uh, that, that we've tied in uh, existing uh, the new services into. Uh, just a couple of concerns that the, uh, that, uh, the fire chief was involved in. Uh, the deputy chief was uh, his review was that he uh, he was looking for another hydrant or uh, so and and we have we pointed out we have one that exists out in prospect street there's one heading out on the cross ave extension uh, uh, existing cross ave going out to cross street two and we added two more additional hydrants that go down on the cross ave that uh, fed down to the cul-de-sac cross uh, augusta ave we're out to Prospect Street, that'll be uh, that'll be altered slightly down near the intersection to provide for the new drainage structures that'll be put in there. Uh, the roadway will be completely improved out to Prospect Street. Uh, we have uh, we have put in sidewalks both sides. Uh, we understand that uh, it's uh, we're asking for re relief for, for undersized lots and you know certain other items. We feel it's only in the fairness to, to, to have this as good a subdivision as we could possibly have. So it gives the access to both houses, both streets. So there were sidewalks both sides. One of the other uh, recommendations I believe came from the planning board under our preliminary was that uh, we've also provided on the revised plans that you're looking at uh, 10 foot uh, planting easements. And now they would be, uh, easements that will be on the existing lots themselves. They'll be used for planting of the trees. Uh, and that way, you know, they're not come down the, you know, 10, 15, 20 years, we're not having the, the, the tree roots digging up the sidewalks and things like that. So it gives the beautification. Uh, this, this tree is planted on, on uh, all of the lots uh, in that easement area. Uh, those are basically, you know, the the improvements that we've we've made. We've added to um, all the other issues we feel have been addressed from the initial review. And certainly, if there's any questions from the board, we can uh, we can follow and answer whatever questions you may have. Um, I, I had uh, thank you, Bill. I had one question. So, what what sheet shows topography uh, that covers lot number four? Is that uh, it, it's on the sheet. Uh, 5B? 5. Yes, Bob, 5B. 5B. Can you go into 5B, Rob, and then just blow up lot number four? So I, I had a couple of questions. It, I know you, you probably had limited uh, drainage solutions. It's kind of unfortunate that that you had to that you had to well for the lack of a better word sacrifice lot number four it's a beauty especially if it's like a showcase lot when you come into the subdivision from uh, from uh, Cross Street right yeah uh, Cross Ave Bob Cross Ave I'm sorry yeah so my 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 question is uh, again that was that's kind of a showcase lot that you've got there and it's a drainage it's a detention basin so my question is. Um, I know I know fencing has fallen out of favor around detention basins and years ago, as we all know, these things all had these ugly fences around and thank God that's been done away with. So are there any plans, Bill, to, to vegetate this thing just to take the, I don't know, how would you say the 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 unsightliness of a detention basin there? I mean well, one yeah, I'm you know I'm sorry, Bob. Yeah, what we we have addressed it what we feel. Uh, it's going to be loomed and seeded. It's something that'll be mowed. It's not going to be something, it's a detention area. There won't be water, you know, standing water in it once the rain, you know, storm events have, have passed. Uh, it'll be controlled by the association. 
uh, is similar to what we've done up on, uh, we did up on uh, Nadia mm -hmm. Way, Bob, up in Linwood Street. Yes. Uh, same basic principle, and it's, it's it, it, I've, I've, you know, I've, I've checked on it periodically, and it's, it's been maintained, it's mowed, it's, 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 it's an asset, you know, it's a, you know, to, to the, to the lots that, you know, in this particular case, lot five, as well as the lots across the street. Sure. Uh, my, yeah, my, my question, and I think, yeah, the, generally, if, they, if they're maintained, they, but my question was, is it possible that the developer would consider? And I see up above there, you got some spotted trees there. How about along the how about along the way of uh, what is that on the on the Augusta Ave side? Can you can you get some plantings in there, Bill, so that when you come down the street, you you don't see just see the stackness of a detention basin? Yeah, one one of the things that if if uh, if Robbie, if you can just if you could you know bring that up a little bit, one thing that uh, that did come up, I believe, on the Board of Appeals was that right now this all is 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 all wooded coming from Cross Ave that's existing, coming all the way from Cross Ave all the way heading north down Augusta. It's 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 actually wooded area right now, Bob. Uh, we had no intentions of disturbing it other than the 10 foot access driveway to be able to come down just for the maintenance around the detention area. Oh, I see. So that's that's not going to even be okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, it won't be. It won't be an aesthetic, uh, you know, a visual uh, type of a thing. Uh, we can certainly we can certainly install plantings, you know, up in the top along the gravel in you know along the gravel uh, gravel driveway right there. You can see it's a flat area. Yeah. It, yeah. I, I'm sure if that's a, if it's a, a beautification, we could add up, you know. Five or six trees along that top pot. That is not a that, that's no problem at all. Okay, but and then when you look at the up, when you look at the top of lot four, I see your proposed plantings up there. Yeah, again, that would be in within the ten foot easement. So we keep it outside of the outside of the limits of the street, the right of way. Yeah, uh, in a in a way, for, you know, in backs of the the sidewalks enough where we gives the give the trees a little bit more more room to grow and. And uh, and not uh, be disruptive of the sidewalks. All right, uh, thank you. And then I got one question for Todd. Is Todd on? Yes, I'm here. Good evening, Todd. How are you? Good evening, Bob. Oh, Doing okay. well. So, so in a typical storm, just ballpark. I don't mean to put you on the spot, but Rob says I do that all the time. Um, so, in a typical storm. How deep will the water be in this basin? And roughly, given the rate of infiltration there, how long would it take the, strong, the, the basin to empty? Roughly, the depth uh, and, and the in the length of and the rate of infiltration. How long would it be wet? Yeah, uh, they all the basin drains. I think it was in just over twenty four hours um, after a hundred year event, uh, which obviously is like a seven inch rainstorm in twenty four hours, which is a pretty big rainstorm. So, uh, any event smaller than that is going to be significantly less than 24 hours for it to drain. And as far as the depth of the water, we have a foot of freeboard built into this uh, above the 100 year event. So that puts the top of the water at, uh, I forget now, it's like two feet deep that we get in there of water in a 100 year storm. Right, which is, which is a pretty major storm. Yes. So significantly less than that on, on an average storm. And again, as I said moments ago, I, I know that fencing around basins is, is thank God, it's fallen out of favor because there's nothing uglier than the fencing with all the plastic bags stuck in the fence and everything. But is that is that a concern uh, to have water in the basin? Uh, have you found that to be an exp in your experience to have? Is that a concern to have? I mean, you've got families there, young children, and so forth. Yeah, well, this the, the, this is not going to be there in the winter time. It's not going to be ice. It's only going to be during the rain event, and then it's going to drain afterwards. Um, yeah. sure. And you Would know, you usually think? in the rain, the kids are not playing in it. So it would be the sunny days that when this is mowed and nice, I see them down there playing baseball in it or wiffle ball or something like that. But I mean, but I mean, after a storm event, the, the storm goes away, and now you've got several inches of water in the basin. That that was my only concern. Yeah, but again, it's dropping quickly. I, I didn't run any calcs on the smaller storms. I know in the seven inch rainstorm, it was like 24 hours or something like that for it to drain. But um, 
the smaller storms, at least I, I, I didn't run it, but the, it, it won't be there for very long because it's going to go out through the bottom. It's going to go out through the drain pipe on the end. Um, it's, yeah. Okay. It's, it's not going to stay. So it's not a major issue. No. Um, board members, any other board members have any other questions, comments, or concerns? I mean, I, this is this has been uh, it's been refined and revised many times, and uh, so um, any, no board members have any comments or concerns. Uh, Rob, you want to open it up to the public? Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any comments, please raise your hand. Um, attendees, if you will raise your hand, and I will unmute you. And we have Councillor Asak, which would who would like to address uh, the group. And so we should, out of deference, um, start with her. Thank you, Rob. Uh, good evening, Board. Shirley Azak, Ward 7 City Councillor. Um, as you just mentioned, Mr. Chairman, this has been before you numerous times. Um, so I just like to state again that I'm here in support of this project. Um, as mentioned, uh, we have had numerous community meetings with abutters and residents. Uh, residents' concerns have been addressed, as you see this evening. I mean, the number has uh, changed significantly since the beginning of this project. Um, and I have not received any calls from residents that are in opposition of this projects in, uh, recently. So um, with all the projects I've seen and have been involved in in the city of Broughton, I have to uh, say, I haven't seen anyone like Mr. Bill Self, or Mr. Fred Hepshi, who have addressed all of the residents' concerns and which is really impressive. And trust me, I attend many of your meetings. I watch them and I attend zoning and watch them. And it's really uh, nice to see that, you know, applicants are listening and they're trying to do what's best for the residents. With that being said, I hope that you vote favor favorably on this project this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, and again, no? Mr. Chair, there's nobody else with their hand up. Okay. All right. We'll close that portion of the, the hearing. Uh, is there any, uh, com any additional comments on the part of the planning department? No, sir. Okay. Uh, well, I guess we're at that, at that moment. Um, would someone like to make a motion? Uh, at Mr. This Chair? Yes. Yes. There are some, um, standard conditions that I just want to specify. Um, this subdivision and all subdivisions will require the homeowners association documents. The streets are to remain private and maintenance is belongs to the homeowners association until the council accepts the street. The same with the street lights. They belong to the homeowners association until the council accepts the street as public. Okay. Ma'am, I have a question. Would you uh, require some kind of a homeowners association agreement uh, at some point? Yes. And when would that be? Um, I believe the way it's phrased is before um, you get a building permit. Okay. So the, the approval, the plans can be signed, they can be recorded, but. That's fine, thank you. We'll, okay. we'll take care of that. Okay, so when, when we make, when we use the language, when we make, in creating a motion, Pam, can we just say with standard conditions or do we need to recite? You, you can, those are going to be standard conditions from now on. They were last month too, so. Okay, so there's no other caveats that we need to be aware of. Having said that, would someone like to make a motion? I'll make motion, a motion to approve with standard conditions. I'll second that. So you get a motion to approve with standard conditions and a second. A vote on the roll call. Larry Hassan? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. Reggie Thomas? Yes. And Bob Pelagi is a yes. So now comes uh, what, surety, I guess? Yes. Mr. McCluskey, what, what would you imagine that your client would, what, what form of surety? Well, 
I, I think that a covenant present time would be the, the appropriate thing to do. And uh, I do know that there are some lots at the entrance uh, of the subdivision that may be considered to be buildable at this point because of their construction of the roadway. Uh, and I, I will ask is, are there any comments on that? On, on that comment, uh, is the, is the- um, You'd be uh, looking for immediate release of those lots? Well, there are, there is a, there's pavement that's already in place and, and Bill Self may be able to uh, resolve this for us. Uh, yeah. and, I, and I might not need a, even a comment, but uh, no, I, I think we, we, um, we would uh, at this point agree to a covenant. And as, as time goes on, we would seek a uh, release of whatever lots might be appropriate given the condition of the roadway. Well, you're going to cut the thing is though, Bill, uh, uh, John, you're going to be cutting into the roadway, so so that you'd need to you'd need to bond somehow bond the work in the roadway. Either pay, either get the get, I, I, get your utilities off the road, and then get your lot released, uh, or, or, or or post some sort of a bond for that. Yeah, but I understand that, that 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 given the given whatever the condition of the roadway and the appropriateness is. Uh, in accordance with the planning board, uh, we would seek releases and, um, you know, it is what it is as far as uh, what, what needs to be done as far as releases and or covenant, right? Right. Okay. You can fine tune that going forward. Right. Yeah, if, if I could add to that, Bob, if you... Go ahead, please. A clarification. I think, I think what uh, John was uh, saying is right now the existing Augusta Rav that we're, uh, we're going to improve the existing conditions. We'll be resurfacing it, things like that. Again, most of all the infra infrastructure is in. I think what John was relating to is, is that we'd like to uh, ask, uh, if, you know, certainly not at this meeting, but maybe your next meeting or whatever, once they're approved, is there a way that we could come in while we're, while we're building the extension, which is a complete new build out and we'd like to be able to come in and maybe get just the lots that are on Augusta Rav, where they're already accessible. You know, the, the way there is, is adequate for any kind of access. And it will also give the contractors something to be building with, you know, for this market while they're also constructing the, you know, the new roadway. Yep. Again, which would be out, you know, it'd be something that could be done. And uh, that's what we're talking about as far as, you know, releases, the, whatever, Whatever lots the planning board could release, I think there's five lots there. Yeah, that's exactly that's correct. Thank you, something, Bill. Something that we could look at at a future, a future. Well, it, you need to have, you know, the approval letter needs to go to to be drafted. It needs to go downstairs. Your uh, your appeal period needs to run. The plan yeah, that you can sign and go on. To, you're probably two months away. So. Yeah, that's what we're saying. At a future meeting, we can. Yeah. Just, uh, yeah partial releases at a future meeting, but I, I, I understand the concept. As long as the infrastructure is in for the lots, mm -hmm. that's, so you couldn't release anything that doesn't have utilities or roadway. Correct, thank you. We just like to, uh, we'll address, the, we'll, we'll get on your planning board agenda once we're, it's all approved and the appeal period is over and everything is in place. Thank you. All right, so anything else as far as administrative on this, Pam? Uh, no, I will be in touch with Attorney McCluskey when I need his client's signature. Okay. Thank you, Pam. All right, I think we're good. Thank you, gentlemen, good luck. Thank you very much. Thank very you appreciate much. the board. It's been well worth the wait. <laughs> yeah. Well, Thank good you. luck, it's been, a, it's been a long time. Well, let's hope we get it right. Again, thank you very much. Greatly appreciate it. Okay. All right, let's move to people. Quincy. Yeah, uh, I got Jim Morris. Eh? Uh, Attorney Nasrella, I will move over. And Chris, 
Hold on. I saw. Oh, you, okay. You got. I've already moved some people over. Okay. I think that's. Now uh, you're live. Beautiful. You're welcome. <laughs> Kristen. Your microphone is live. <laughs> Just so you know. All right. So the next agenda item, are we ready to go, Mr. May? We are ready, sir. The next agenda item is a preliminary subdivision. The property is at 42 Quincy Street. Uh, it was a five lot. Now it's a four lot. They're returning uh, from last meeting. And the owner represented the Spring, Springfield Ventures Realty Trust. And Good evening, gentlemen. Can you put this up on the board, please, uh, uh, Rob, the new plan? Oh, Scott, either one of you. Oops, sorry, that's the wrong one. Oh. Yeah, that's the wrong one. Quincy, uh, where is it? There it is. That's it. Yep. All right. Uh, good evening, Scott. If you want to. Uh, Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Scott Ferry from Holmgren Engineering. Uh, Attorney Nazarella is on screen somewhere, I hope. Uh, That's what I thought. There he is. Uh, well, the plan that we have before you is a, uh, a revised plan from the preliminary that we had at your last meeting. As you recall, it was a five lot uh, preliminary subdivision. We had uh, a lot of back and forth with the planning board on some changes and uh, concerns that you folks had. And I think with this revised plan, we've pretty much hit everything that was brought up. And I, I think it was pretty much at least one comment from, from each of you. So if I can just take a second, I can go over it. Then we can uh, keep moving, Mr. Chairman. So uh, the first comment we had was about what we'll call the estate lots. Uh, they had 45 feet of frontage and the area was around 30 to 40,000. Mr. Chairman, you had a comment that uh, looking at other estate lots in neighboring towns, the area is usually double. Uh, we listened to your comment. We got rid of one of the estate lots. Now we have lot one, which houses uh, the existing house and bonds and lot three. Uh, lot three has now 60 feet of frontage and 61,000 square feet. So we went from the 45 feet, which was of some concern with the engineering department, increased it to 60, went from about 37,000 to 60,000. So we've doubled the zoning as, uh, as you mentioned. Uh, lot one, the frontage stayed the same. It's uh, right around 90 feet of frontage. We increased the area on that one to 77,000 square feet. So again, uh, more than double uh, what's required in zoning. The other uh, two lots, lots two and four, we originally had uh, about 90 feet of frontage, I believe, on each, uh, and around 12,000 square feet. We've increased those to 115 feet of frontage. We're up to 17,000 square feet, and there was also a comment about pushing those, uh, those houses back a little further off of Quincy Street. We've moved those back 15 feet. Uh, that was another board member comment. We also flipped the driveways. So the driveways before were all kind of jammed towards the middle of the property. Uh, on two and four, we've made them end loading on uh, on kind of the outside edge of the of the lots to get a little more spacing between those three new driveways. Uh, the other significant change we made, uh, there was some discussion about a buffer in the back uh, for the lots, the existing lots along Debbie Road. So we've had a 50 foot wide uh, no clearing buffer in the back of lots one and three. I believe that is it, Mr. Chairman. Yep, much improved. Much Thank improved. You. Yep. Mr. Morrissey spent a lot of time looking at it and tweaking it sleepless nights, he said. Yeah, uh, well, I, I, I'm really, from my own perspective, I'm pleased that you, that you diminished this by one lot because I kept the old plan and it was still I was anticipating seeing what moving the driveways were going to do, but it was to me it was still overdeveloped. I thought, but much improved. Um, Thank you. Uh, board members, any other board members have any comments? 
Did they all fall asleep? No. Mr. Chairman, no. may I ask a question? Yes, sir. Um, Scott, the the little dog leg turnaround seems kind of short in the uh, estate lot, if you will. Is yes. it my imagination or? No, it, yeah, to be honest with you, I don't know why we stopped drawing it there, Chief, but it, it does continue all the way around uh, to the existing bond, the, the existing driveway. It isn't quite as defined. What you what we have right there is the uh, the vertical granite curbing that they have, the existing granite curbing that they have to outline the driveway. And the curbing ends, but the gravel driveway continues. I, I just, uh, to be honest, we just forgot to continue draw, uh, drawing it. So I'll make sure we put that on the definitive plan. I think he's talking, okay. about, I think he's talking yeah. about the stub on lot three, I think. No? Correct. See, See that little stub the right very, there? Oh, okay. shallow turnaround stub. I'm sorry. Yes. It, so, is, that, is that short or is it my imagination? It appears short. Okay. It should be about so, 20 feet, at least 20 feet so long. If you could just adjust that, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you for noticing. Uh, any other board members with comments? None. Okay. I only have, oh, wait a minute. You, can you put that, I'm sorry. Can you put that back up again, please, Rob? I'm sorry. Or, or Scott, whoever put it up. No, so, moving to the next case. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, wrong plan. What? Ah, do it again. Sorry. <laughs> Told you, moving to the next case. <laughs> Sorry. Um, there it is. There okay, I think I think you've made some substantial changes, as I said. There's only one other question or request that I would have. You see the driveway configuration on lot number two? Yes. Is it possible to flip to flip the driveway in the house on lot number two so that you don't have two driveways coming out at the same place? Just, just imagine if you flip the driveway on lot number two, the driveways on your project would be almost evenly spaced up and down the street. A hundred percent. Sure. Can you, would you be able to do that? Not a problem. Yes. That's my only, that would be my only comment. So you don't have two driveways uh, right next to each other. Right. We'll take care of that. Uh, let's see. So this is a preliminary subdivision. This does not have public input. Um, any other, so no comments on the part of the board, no comments on the part of the planning department. Very good. Uh, well, let's move on uh, anybody would someone like to make a motion the ward council i think wants to speak yeah. oh i'm sorry pardon me um he's raising his real uh, hand <laughs> pardon me good uh, town council thompson good evening i'm sorry uh no uh, good evening mr chairman uh thank you uh members of the uh planning board my name is uh jeffrey thompson i am the ward five city councilor i know it's been a long night so i will be brief I do support this modified plan at 42 Crescent, uh, Quincy Street. I do appreciate that uh, Mr. Morrissey listened to the comments of this board and, and decided to uh, scale back this project uh, by reducing uh, this development from four houses uh, instead of five, he is able to increase the frontage on lots two, three and four. And although uh, Brockton does not have an estate lot ordinance uh, the removal of the one estate lot house does allow for the existing estate lot uh, to meet the, the standard uh, ordinance of other towns, uh, which is uh, doubling the lot area and uh, there's at least 60 foot of frontage. Uh, so I think that'll be a, a good addition there. Um, the, plan, uh, the plan indicates that the developer will also maintain that uh, 50 foot uh, buffer on the back of the property, which abuts uh, Debbie Street. So I know that screening would be appreciated uh, by the uh, butters. Now, and although I'm not seeking this to be a condition, uh, uh, Mr. Morrissey has stated that he is determined uh, to um, engage in construction uh, of this development uh, during the summer months, uh, so as not to adversely affect the uh, school traffic uh, come the fall. So uh, I do support uh, the building of high-end uh, new construction in this area. And I do support 
this plan, and um, I, I, I ask that you recommend it favorably. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, members of the board. Thank you, Councilor. Uh, nobody else that you recognize who wishes to speak, Rob? Ladies and gentlemen of the public, uh, if you'd like to speak, uh, please raise your hand so I can recognize you. And I have no hands raised, sir. All right, hearing none, uh, would the board, someone on the board like to make a motion? Motion to approve preliminary subdivision 42 Quincy Street. I'll second that with the change in the two driveways um, indicated by Mr. Chair. All right. Wait a minute. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm catching up. Wait a minute. Okay. I gotcha. Okay. okay. Vote on the roll call. Um, Larry Hassan. Yes. Tony Gonzalez. Yes. Reggie Thomas. Abstaining. And Bob Pelagi is a yes. So we have a quorum. We have a. Okay. So congratulations, you're all set. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Well, they're partially set. They have to come back again for a definitive. Well, they got to go to the zoning board now. Done for the night for them. Please move on. Thank you. <laughs> they don't miss it. Scott, are you done? Is this your last? No, Scott's still with us. Uh, number well, number ten is uh, is uh, is uh, Fairview Avenue. Okay. Yep. Um, I have to move. Um, Mr. Burke, and is that Mr. Mr. Self again, Bill Self? Yeah. He's a busy guy. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Burke, Mr. Self, is there really anybody good. else in your team? Uh, Bill Self, and I, I think uh, that's going to be it for the night. Uh, and who is Dave Cruz? Uh, Dave Cruz is in a butter, and I think he'd probably like to speak at some point. Okay, we will recognize him when it comes to the public time. Excellent, thank you. Uh, Mr. May, with your permission? Go ahead. Mr. Chairman, go. Uh, uh, excuse me, uh, Mr. Pelagi, with your permission. Uh, uh, Jim Burke and I represent uh, uh, Chris Mathers. Uh, I've known Chris uh, for many years. In fact, I knew his uh, mom and dad. His dad, as most of you or many of you realize, was a, uh, a very uh, di distinguished member of the bar in Plymouth County that lived in Brockton, was also a member of the judiciary. Uh, and Cortland uh, and, and his wife uh, owned that property at the 166 Fairview Avenue an extremely attractive residence uh, that uh, also had uh, adjoining it a, a tennis court. It's a very large parcel of land. Uh, it's roughly 3.5 acres. Uh, at one point in time, the rear of it was, uh, was uh, mowed for hay uh, by uh, a, a, a prior landowner. Uh, it is uh, Chris's uh, proposal and request with uh, Bill's help to develop a plan that would allow the existing uh, home to remain uh, with roughly 91,000 square feet of land uh, and 140 feet of frontage, and then have a buildable lot adjacent where the tennis court was uh, that again uh, would have 40,000 square feet of land well in excess of our uh, minimum lot requirement, uh, but uh, 100 square feet. Uh, by the uh, uh, division of the two uh, parcels, it would also create a, uh, a setback, side setback uh, of, of roughly about uh, uh, six feet, I guess, uh, from the existing lot uh, to the uh, new lot that's being created. So it is our hope uh, that this uh, board will allow us the opportunity to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, and to uh, create our argument before that board uh, to establish the, uh, the hardship that I think that exists. Uh, to allow the development of the property. Uh, and it will, I think, be very much in harmony with the existing uh, neighborhood. Uh, the frontage uh, 
is somewhat consistent uh, with the number of the lots on Fair Avenue Avenue, which is uh, long been thought of as uh, one of our uh, very distinguished streets in the city. Uh, Bill, I think uh, the technically, I'd like you to walk them through the existing condition uh, and what we intend to do. Uh, and uh, we'll go from there and answer questions. Yeah, certainly. Uh, yeah, as, uh, as Jim explained, the only, uh, the only uh, thing I, I want to just want to correct is that on the existing dwelling 166, there is uh, along that property line, we will be asking uh, through the Board of Appeals for a variance under the side yard setback for that, for that particular building. Right at the very end, there's an old type of a work shed, stable area type of an effect. Uh, without having to cut it back three feet to make the sideline zone on that. That's really the only, uh, you know, side uh, setbacks that uh, we've been asking for a variance with. Uh, as you can see, the proposed uh, dwelling be a four bedroom home. Uh, it's, it's, it, it meets all the criteria for the setbacks. Again, we're only looking for really in these, both these lots would be the variation uh, under the frontage, uh, waverly of frontage of 175 feet and down to 100 for the lot one and uh, 140 for the lot two. Uh, we feel that, uh, you know, leaving it, uh, the rest of the areas will be left in, intact. It's basically wooded, uh, pretty much an overgrown field out behind 166, as Jim recalled. And uh, we feel that uh, it would fit in with the neighborhood, uh, keeping the lots so, you know, very close to the other types of, of sizing, certainly larger in area, but uh, you know, 100 feet we figure uh, would be uh, adequate for, for a nice new home to go in there. Is there any, is there any proposal or any thoughts about doing anything with that real land in the future, Bill? Uh, I, you know, it, the only uh, there was one change. Uh, Jim uh, Chris came into the board uh, a few months back, and there was a request by one of the neighbors to have uh, just a sliver. Uh, they were longtime neighbors uh, uh, coming off of Fairview, and, and and it was an opportunity for them to you know the, the neighbors on that side. The, the plan was created and uh, gave them those small parcels just to give them a little bit more buffers in the rear areas. So certainly, but as far as your question, Bob, there was, uh, as far as I'm, I know, and, and it has been brought up in our conversations, uh, that I think it's, it's, it's intended to be left there. There's no other access to it. Uh, this is really the only lot that has the access towards the, uh, towards the rear of the property. There's a small wetland area to the rear of lot one, uh, pretty much you know, would, would uh, prevent uh, anything from being built out there. So, you know, what you see, you know, being presented as far as I know is, is pretty much the way the lots will stand. Okay. Um, all right, very good. Any, any other questions or comments on the part of the board? So um, I'm on a, a butter 154 Fairview Ave and I spoke to Mr. Matthews and he had mentioned that- um, um, Councilor, uh, I, I would recommend that since you're in a butter that you should uh, our director butter, you should recuse yourself. So um, I sure I'll do that, but I he he did say he would give up that existing right away, and I forgot the terminology. I just wanted to see if the attorney had acknowledged if he acknowledged that with the attorney. Sure, let me let me uh, try to assist on the on the right of way. Uh, as I said many 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 years ago, uh, the prior owner actually had a. a a uh, right of way that went from Rockland Street uh, to this property, which allowed him access to the rear parcel that was, I believe, used for hang. Uh, as, as you can see from the various plans, and Bill Self and I had a number of discussions about this, the existing dwelling, say, at 184, uh, which is shown on the plan, you don't see uh, the, uh, uh, the easement or the right of way. In fact, all the way down the line to Rockland Street, uh, at various times in the past when the property was conveyed, uh, the, the rights to that right of way, in fact, uh, have terminated. So uh, it is virtually a, a useless uh, uh, right of way, which I think 
that if we oh. took the time and expense to do uh, a, a judicial action, we could in fact get it removed from the plan. But that, that's for another day and another discussion. So uh, essentially we, we already, uh, it's our opinion that the right of way is is, is been abandoned uh, as, as an existing condition and it's not our intention to use it in the future. Bill, does that work for you? Yeah, I, it, it, during our conversation, it was really, it was a right of way reserved for that particular back property of lot two uh, way back when, when the subdivision, of, you know, I think it first appeared on the, the plan of the subdivision back in the 20s, 28, I think, as the 1930. Uh, right now, there's actually no reason for, you know, it's rights of, of the owner of that lot two to pass over which would be the, you know, the property of 154. And certainly if this is, uh, certainly Jim, as mentioned, could, it could be looked into and, and uh, you know, he could release his rights and that would pretty much put an end to that. But it, legally it would have to be done and that could be done at a later time. But to answer the question, I believe the current owner uh, at 166 uh, has no problem releasing rights to the easement because a uh, right of way, because it's in their opinion already been abandoned. And so the owner, just to be clear, the owner of the owner of uh, house number one thirty eight has no rights in that in that right of way. Where is one thirty eight, Bob? It's, it's, I, it's I apologize. The, uh, no, no, absolutely not. No. Okay. Does not. No, they do not. No. Okay. All right. Any other questions? on the part of the board. Any other comments on the part of the planning department? We did receive a letter from um, Council Cruz. He was unable to be here, but he wanted to be on record in support. Okay, very good. Um, well, I guess hearing no other comments. Uh, well, there's somebody who wants to, there's a couple of people with their hands up. All right. Um, Rob, can you recognize David Cruz? I'm going to unmute. No, I moved him. Oh, you moved him. And then um, PN, I don't know who that is. And PN was going to have to identify themselves. Philip Nasrallah. <laughs> He's in here. <laughs> He's opposed. I don't No, I'm not opposed. I just had a question when I, and I was only watching this. Um, because I, I live off of Rock Meadow. But uh, when you mentioned the 184, I um, have led, been led to believe I have a deed that goes into what used to be Dr. Jones's bond, the red bond. That was the easement coming off Fairview Avenue to uh, that 184, because I got the tax bill that says 184 Fairview Avenue. Okay, so your question, Attorney Nesreller, is specifically. Um, well, I think that 184 uh, relates to the property that I own, uh, which is formerly the uh, the it was it's a red bond there, and it's a separate a separate lot from uh, my residence on Rock Meadow, and it's uh, somewhere between Rock Meadow and Fairview Avenue. It's always been uh, it's been denoted as 184 Rear. And I think that's what that easement relates to. I'd be happy to show it to Attorney Burke, and um, and you know I never thought much of it because I don't exit or uh, egress on Fairview Avenue. But uh, nonetheless, there is a document that relates to 184, showing that easement going into uh, that red barn area. And I think uh, Attorney Burke's probably familiar with the property I'm, I'm alluding to. Actually, I'm kind of lost, so uh, I, I'm I'm not clear at all. Right uh, behind uh, Judge Mather's uh, home, there's the big um, uh, corral, uh, that lot of land. And on it, there is a, uh, joining it, is a another uh, freestanding building. It was a, a barn for his horses. Dr. Jones and uh, Judge Mathers had horses there. Uh, I own that now. And um, the D to it talks about 184 rear. There it is right there. Okay, uh, it 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 doesn't seem to touch in any way on the right of way that we were just talking about. Well, I, I, this 
my comment is more of a question. I'm not. Oh, yeah. Okay. Sure. I'm not sure. I just heard 184 and it dawned on me that's the tax bill I get, but I'm, I'm not. Uh, and I have no position in this either way as well. I'm just raising it as uh, more of an inquiry. Would it nope. help? Would it help if we brought that sheet back up again, Rob, showing the subdivision? No. Because if you go to the left side on the on the left side of that sheet, it shows clearly shows house number one eighty four. Yeah, this house right here is one eighty four. Uh, no, that's one fifty four, Rob. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It. It. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here you go. Yeah. Yeah. It's way down. Can you bring can you bring that sheet up again, please? Hang on. One eighty four is west of the. Keep going west. There it is. Is that what you're talking about, Phil? Well, it, these uh, one eighty four. Those two lots were created by plan uh, by Haywood and Boynton. Geez, and sometime in the eighties. Uh, I I don't ever remember seeing any right of way that uh, that connected these properties to the properties further uh, to the south, which would be uh, under, under uh, Lila Nesarella and Phil Nesarella. I see it's, it, it is able, labeled 184 Fairview, but the only right of way by plan that's ever been shown is the that right of way, again, in the original subdivision of uh, off of Rockland Street, and it went straight out. I personally haven't seen any plans on record referring to it. Does it mean that there's not another, you know, an older deed uh, for some kind of access to that? Uh, but my deeds, uh, you know, the deeds for our property doesn't refer to anything other than that right away. And it's distinctly uh, call for, you know, the, the one that's going all the way up to Rockland. Well, to move the issue, we're, we're more than happy to talk with Phil uh, sure. off record and, and just go over with uh, Bill Self and, and look at what he has and, and compare yeah, but I, I just don't see it relates to the specific issue before you now, Mr. Rowe. No, it does not. No, I think that's that, that would be an appropriate solution. Yeah, and I'm happy to do that. I wasn't trying to uh, interrupt the proceeding. I only heard 184, and I thought it might be more than coincidental. And so it, when you effectuate what you're doing, it doesn't cloud your title at all by having that. So uh, I'll, I'll be happy to share with you my documents. If it's not related at all, so be it. Anyone else that wishes to uh, comment, Rob, that you can see? I think Dave Cruz. Dave Cruz would like to speak. Good evening, Mr. Cruz. Dave, you need to unmute yourself. How's that? Is that better? Yes. Yeah, so All go. right, very good. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman, board members. Thank you for your time. Uh, I've been involved with uh, the Mathers maybe as long as Mr. Burke. And one thing I want, I'm sure Mr. Burke will remember, Cortland, one of the greatest things he did is he volunteered to be city solicitor under the units uh, administration for a dollar a year, one dollar a year. And I don't think Jack ever paid him. Uh, uh, I, I want to applaud the Mathers family because they've been working on this for a while and, and, you know, Chris has a, a big family and you know how that can get with the pressure from all. But they, I think, have presented a modest development of the land as compared to a recent uh, proposal up in this neighbor, neighborhood where they tried to put 10 gallons of material in a five gallon bucket. Uh, and in this case, the Mathis family actually owns the land that they're trying to, to develop. So in the essence of time, I'll tell you no more stories, but I will uh, request that the board vote in favor of this and uh, I'm sure you'll do the right thing. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for uh, board members for your hard work and have a good evening. Thank you, Mr. Cruz, same to you. Uh, anyone else wishes to be recognized, Rob? I do not see anybody else with their hands up, sir. All right, thank you. So hearing no hearing no others, no one to be recognized, uh, would someone care to make a motion? Extra now, but this one's here.
Motion to approve. Approve the preliminary subdivision. Motion to approve preliminary subdivision 166 Fairview you have. I'll second that. Okay, vote on the roll call. Larry Hassan? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Uh, recuse myself due to being a oh, butter. Yes, you need to do that. I'm sorry, pardon me. So Larry was a yes. Uh, Reggie? Yes. And Bob Pelagi is a yes. So. Thank the board for its time. Yep, thank you. Thank Have you very day. much. Scott, who else is promoting or uh, presenting with you? Uh, I should have, uh, I believe, Attorney Andy Rezovitz. Thank you. And Everett Money, Murray is the uh, applicant. He may be there as well. Yeah, I put him. Where did he go? I got him. Well, I thought I had moved Marco, him. Marco Murray. Yep. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, so who is the spokesperson, please? Would it be Attorney Resovitz? I believe Scott was going to handle sure. this, that I will definitely jump in if needed. But. Scott, take it away. All right, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Scott Farrier from Holmgren Engineering, uh, representing Hyacinth and Everett Realty Associates. Uh, what we have before you is a preliminary subdivision off of Waverly Park Ave, uh, just before Waverly Park Ave goes into Peterson Ave. And it's uh, about a, a five acre piece of property. Uh, and what we're hoping to do is to develop the property into seven residential lots. Now, uh, the main reason we're here before you with the preliminary subdivision is we need permission to proceed uh, to the Board of Appeals. The lots uh, would need relief either from frontage or area. The lots are, uh, you know, they're, they're pretty good size. They're right around 22 to 25,000 square feet. They all have uh, a little more than 125 feet of frontage, so we're not uh, we're not too far off on the zoning uh, issue as far as that goes. Uh, the biggest issue we have, and we might as well get it out there to talk about, Mr. Chairman, and I know it's come up in recently in other subdivisions, our property, the access out to Waverly Park Ave is a separate plot of land, plot 207, that is a 40 foot wide strip of land. Now, the, uh, the parent piece of property, was uh, owned by a gentleman named Cisco back in the 50s. And Mr. Cisco divided the property at nine Waverly Park Ave, 15 Waverly Park Ave, the 40 foot wide strip and 27 Waverly Park Ave. So he submitted an A&R plan uh, to the planning board back in 1957 that created the three lots and the fourth lot uh, being this 40 foot right of way. Now it's our, uh, our feeling on, on this situation. He owned the back land as well, even though it doesn't state in the 1957 recorded plan that the land was to be a future roadway. He left, uh, he created the roundings at the entrances. Uh, and at the time a 40 foot road opening was what was required uh, by the city and uh, was kind of standard at the time. So we feel like it was certainly his intention, again, where he owned the back land, he divided the properties on either side of that strip that is now plot 207. It was his intention at the time uh, when he brought it before the planning board to create that 40 foot lot to give access to the back land for a future subdivision. Again, it doesn't say that, but certainly if that wasn't the intention, he would have divided that 40 feet, uh, that 40 foot strip and given 20 feet to the guy on the left and 20 feet to the guy on the right. He also would not have created those roundings uh, at the property line, which obviously, uh, you know, symbolize a, a roadway entrance. So it's our intention, 
as we proceed along the approval process to ask for a waiver uh, from your 50 foot uh, right of way width for that 120 foot uh, stretch of, of our roadway. Once we get beyond those abutting lots, we then widen out to the 50 foot that you folks require. Uh, but we would need a waiver from that uh, 50 foot down to the existing 40 foot uh, strip that is there. Uh, in doing so, we, we can still meet your roadway width. We still have the 34 feet of paving width. And uh, really, at, at, at that point, we feel like the, the road uh, kind of meets your requirements that are, that are set forth in the, in the subdivision rules and regs, that it's protecting the safety and convenience of the inhabitants. Uh, all lots in the subdivision have safe and convenient access uh, to their lots. Uh, we don't really see where that 40 foot opening uh, as opposed to the 50 foot for that that 120 feet uh, stretch really causes any kind of a safety issue. Uh, okay. Um, and I do have, if, if you wanted to see it, I do have that 1957 plan. Uh, I don't think I submitted as part of the preliminary, but uh, if Rob doesn't have it, if, if you wanted to give me the, the clicker, I could call that up to show it to you if you wanted to see it. So it was that, that neck, that 120 foot strip was created in 57? 1957. It was signed by the planning board on, looks like November 6th, 1957. Correct. Uh, you can pull it up if you'd like. All right, thank you, sir. Well, you were correct, Scott, in suggesting that, uh, that 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 120 foot long by 40 foot wide strip would be the the issue of contention, or at least it is in my mind, because um, I mean, there's a lot of things. First of all, if I may, um, there's you know, in doing a new subdivision, the planning board, any planning board, has the obligation to ensure you know convenience safety access i mean those are things that are commensurate with any subdivision in any community great and so we, we may be lacking to, for out of the gate here i'm lacking a little information for example waverly park avenue the existing uh, i i don't know what the width of waverly park avenue is the condition of the paving waverly park avenue is out to the major thoroughfare which would be Plain Street. Uh, I don't. I, I assume that that 120 foot long strip is unimproved, right? Right. Exactly. Yes. So I mean, there's a lot of questions that got to be answered here. You're showing a fully conforming 50 foot wide layout with sidewalks on both sides, and then they just come to a they just come to a screeching stubbing halt. I mean, it's a it's a it's not a unique challenge, but it is it is a challenge. I mean, it, it, it does bring pressure to bear on the obligations of what of what any board has to consider under the guidelines or under the guidance of the subdivision control law. Mm -hmm. And I think as you know, Mr. Pelagi, the all of the, the subdivision rules and regs, all of the the state zoning uh, bylaw, nothing really speaks to any kind of grandfathered rights you would have uh, as far as subdivision rules and regs. Everything speaks about zoning and, and your protection from an a and plan. Uh, there's really nothing that you can point to uh, about subdivision regs, roadway widths, any kind of construction standard. So it is a, it is a unique situation. But I, as I said, I think if you look at that plan, the intention obviously was to have it be a roadway uh, where Mr. Cisco owned the front and the rear property. So I think it's clear that that was his intention. Uh, I don't know if he intended it to hang around for 65 years, but uh, I think it, it, I think it, it, I think it's clear that was his intention. As far as the sidewalk, I, I, I do understand what you're saying there. Uh, we have 34 feet of paving in the past. We've asked for waivers on paving width. Uh, if we reduce the, the paving down to a, uh, you know, a more common 28 feet, then it would certainly give us enough room to, to yeah, have I mean, the sidewalk 
yeah. go out to Waverly. Yeah, if you got relief from, from paving with that would help the situation out. Right. right now, as it's Mr. You're showing 34 feet wide of paving all the way out to Waverly Park Avenue. Exactly. Okay. Now, and, and Scott, curious, I mean, we don't have any topography. Hope, hope, hopefully, you don't have any grading changes in there. You've only got, you've only got three feet to dispel any grading differences. On either Scott, side. all we're seeing is your email box. Um, oh. We're not seeing your drawing. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm sorry I, about that, Rob. And the Waverly layout is 40 feet. Does that do it, Rob? The no. Waverly, Park, Waverly Park Avenue, the way he's got it drawn here, is 50 feet. I was just on the city's GIS page, and it shows it at 40 feet. But I well, can't big, see his. That's a, big, that's a big difference there, Scott. I mean, I don't not to be too overly critical, but you, you've got if you if you look at if you look at the requirements, the plan requirements for a, for a properly uh, properly uh, um, prepared de preliminary subdivision plan, you, you're, you're, you've got some deficiencies there. Is Waverly Park Avenue a 40 foot wide way? Um, yes, sir. I threw a scale on this. This is showing 50 feet. Um, yes, but if you were to go to the city's zoning page, um or not zoning page excuse me the gis let me pull that up because i have that right here um um do a measure from one side to the other Are you showing 50 feet of paving and you're showing uh, you're showing about actually you're showing 32 feet. I'd be surprised. You're showing 32 feet of paving, 50 feet on a 50 foot wide way. Right. Well, according to the GIS, it's only 40 feet wide. That's a big difference. So now what you've got, Scott, instead of having 120 feet of deficient roadway, you've got whatever that scales out to be to the major thoroughfare. But those are my just my, my opening comments. Uh, does the board have any other comments or that they'd like to share? I'm going to bring the plan back up again. Um, I would like to point out, and, and we've Put this in our memo that we shared with you all um, that um, in the last year we've had two other applicants come forward with um, frontages or with with road width that were um, not to the city's 50 foot layout standard and you have um, required both of those to come back as conforming. One did, one has not yet. Um, so I don't know if uh, that is going to set a bad precedent, um, but that is something that you need to take into consideration. Any other board members have any comments? Mr. Chair, <clears throat> I don't really have any other comments. I, I think it's already been discussed. I, I think that right of way and now the discovery of the width of Waverly Park Ave is it's gonna cause a lot of problems. Unfortunately, that property out in the back two lots there supports the plan, but that right of way is gonna be a problem. I mean, I'm, I'm certainly understand that, but as far as the condition of existing Waverly Park Ave, there isn't uh, there isn't much we can do about that. I don't believe. No, but your your original claim was that you only had 120 feet of of, of deficient roadway to deal with. Right. I'm I'm right. I'm talking the property line. the The roadway layout would be 120 feet, not the paving. But yeah. 
Mr. Chia, uh, Scott, Scott, just have a question too. Um, and it, 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 I'm just looking at it now. It doesn't make sense. You can't get access through lot two going all the way down Waverly Park Ave, right? No. I think so. Okay. No. Property was all separated up by on uh, an A and R, and then the church has been selling off portions of it as they go along. Mr. Chairman, may I be heard on this matter? Yes, please, sir. Yeah. Thank you. So I don't know if uh, we're able to take a look at the 1957 plan. I, I have it on my computer, and I don't know if I can share it with you or if Scott can do that. I tried. The, the 19... Uh, if you can share it, please go ahead. Well, I have done this before. I will try it. <laughs> I will try my best. Um, and let's see here. There we go. I'm gonna try to make it bigger. Okay, uh, maybe a little smaller actually. Can everybody see this plan? Yes. Yes. So this plan was, as we've heard, this plan was uh, created and approved by the Brockton Planning Board in 1957. And as we've also heard Scott say, it was clearly intended by not just the owner, but the planning board to be a roadway. And that's why it has, of course, the radiuses at the end of the street where it says 41 feet, 40.12 40 feet. Um, so I think it's already been approved and I, and I understand that there isn't a grandfathered uh, guarantee, but it has been approved by, by the city. And uh, it wasn't well, it was, uh, access to these remaining properties. Well, the, the, well to be for clarification, what? attorney, it, the, the plan was approved, but that right. parcel C was never designated as a roadway. I see we're, that. I see that. I mean, now we're, we're taking we can, property. I'm taking the liberty to say that it's a roadway, but it's not a roadway. It's true Is that it? it doesn't say that. And I don't know what was on the plans in 1957, but I do know that because of the radiuses, it was intended to be at least preserved as a roadway. Uh, attorney uh, uh, Andrew, could you, is, is it possible for you to scoop the drawing up a little bit so we can see because it says Brockton planning something at the bottom and, and we're trying to see if that was, and it's hard to tell that, if that. I think what it, that, that's, that's an A&R plan anyway. The planning board did not see that, I don't think. Lester Odekirk endorsed says, that plan. Approval it, under it, the subject and control law not required. Right. So that was an ANR plan. The planning board never saw that plan. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. Well, in any case, I would also like to point out that if the width of the roadway of Waverly Park Roadway is 40 feet or 35 feet, and this roadway is 40 feet, it, you know, you're going to have consistency there. It's going to be a consistent width of the existing roadway. And I wanted to point that out to see if that made any difference to you. Uh, it's not as if it would be a much narrower roadway coming off of Waverly Park. It would be the same. In fact, it would have sidewalks if required, of course. Yeah, they're, they're, to my knowledge, and again, we're suffering from the lack of information on this preliminary plan as far as what exists on Waverly Park. So we don't know the width of the paving. Uh, we don't know what improvements have been made, but again, the planning board's charge is to make sure that there is, you know, there's a safety factor, a convenience factor, an access factor, all the way out to, in my opinion, that's my opinion. All the and way I, right, I would suggest there would be, if we look, if we go look back at the submitted subdivision plan, I mean, there's certainly full access and safety provided by the, the roadway, which is 40 feet long for 120 feet and then 50, excuse me, wide, 
and then 50 feet wide with sidewalks. So safety, convenience, I think it's all there. I think it's consistent with the purpose and the intent of the old subdivision, subdivision control law. I don't, I don't really see how you can say it is not. Um, and, you know, I think developing this land would certainly be in the public interest. This, this um, neighborhood would be arguably improved by the development of this land in this way. All right, I appreciate that. Is, is any other board members have any comments? At this time, Mr. May, do you recognize anybody else that would like to be like to speak or like to be recognized? Did you see Councillor um, on, on the call? Councillor Nye Castro is on board um, and available to speak. And we have three attendees left. If they would like to speak, please raise your hand or raise your hand. Or use the, the attendees speak first. And I'm, I'm, I'm not seeing any of the attendees raise their hand. So Jackie, Kim, Louie, if you would like to speak, please indicate so. And there's no indication. Mr. Chairman, may I ask a question? Yes, sir. Would it, uh, are you looking for some, I, I've heard you say you'd need more information on Waverly Park. Would it assist you if we were able to, or if we uh, created a more detailed plan with those, uh, the, with the width and the location of the existing Waverly Park Avenue? Is that something that would assist us in reaching uh, a determination that this might be possible? I mean, more information is better than less. Um, if you did do that, it would be, it would, it, there's no guarantee, of course, but I, I'm, um, again, it's it, more information is better than less, but um, I mean, we've already, uh, you know, we've already discovered that the, that the plan shows uh, graphically an, a, 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 an erroneous width of the existing way there, which doesn't help the situation. Um, and I don't have any detail on the on the street that you're spilling out onto. So, I mean, I think the, the preliminary plan requirements ask for, I mean, a, a whole host of things. I mean, you know, I mean, some of them can be eliminated for discussion purposes because that's what a preliminary plan is. But mm -hmm. there's a lot of key things on the on that laundry list of requirements that make up a preliminary plan that are missing. Uh, having said that. Uh, uh, Councilor Nicastro, would you like to be recognized at this time? Yes, yes, thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. How's my bandwidth? So far, so good. Good, good. I'll speak quickly. Susan Nicastro, Ward 4, City Councilor. This property is located in Ward 4, right on the very edge of Ward 4 and the City of Brockton. Okay, I'm looking at a 1957 approval not required plan. Okay, it's not a subdivision plan, it's an A&R plan. Um, lot C shown on that plan, we're calling it, you're calling it a roadway and I understand why. It just as easily was a driveway because we know that in real life, the land behind it, which is the subject of this evening's meeting, was a field for many years. It was the Sons of Italy field. And, and I know many people who enjoyed happy times with their families there. So a driveway has different requirements and, and uh, there's different concerns with that than a roadway into a seven lot subdivision. Um, and, and of course, as the city councilor, I've received about eight calls and several emails about this proposed project, mostly because of the ZBA notices that went out to abutters. Everyone is concerned because Waverly Park Avenue is acknowledged to be narrow and they have to park their cars um, and even parking cars on one side of the road make it narrow and they wonder about how will cars make a swing out of this, um, let's see, <coughs> if need be. Um, I, I'm concerned about the people who would live here in the future. I'm concerned that you wouldn't have sidewalks on that roadway on that lot C on either side or even on one side and that that would 
um, make children it be endangered. Um, I'm concerned about the families that live on Waverly Park Avenue. I, you know, I understand there aren't a lot of pieces of, of, of just under five acres land in the city right now that are ripe for development. I'm just not sure. Um, my first concern is for the people who already live there and their ability to, to uh, pass safely and, and, have, and walk safely. So I have real concerns about this. I'm sorry to say. Thank you. I had one question. Um, uh, if I could quickly, uh, I, I'd like to apologize. I forgot to mute um, a second ago and uh, my blowing my nose was not a comment on uh, the counselor's testimony. Well, that was thank you. you. <laughs> thank you for clarifying that. God, well, you're, so, you're, so sorry. Rob, we thank you for your honesty. So uh, attorney um, Resovitz, did you, did you do a title on this? I did. I don't necessarily have that at my fingertips, but please That's ask. Okay. Just, can you ballpark? When did Mr. Cisco take title? I mean, obviously he did this, he did this division uh, through, through an A&R in 57. When did he take title to this property? Roughly, do you I'm know? Not sure. I'm not sure I have that information. Um, let's see. If you, I don't mean to. And I do want to say that Pam and I will check the files tomorrow to see if we can find the rules and regulations of the planning board at that time um, and, and see if there's any clarification so we can draw from that. A clarification on what, Rob? On roadway width. I can tell you what it is. I can tell you because it because the because the 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 last zoning change was when was when all the Campanelli properties were being developed. All of those properties, as tiny as those lots were, those are 50 foot wide ways. And all of those, I worked on all of them. They're all they're all they were done in the 60s. So if this if Mr. Cisco took title to this, that's what I'm trying to ballpark. It was 1953, Mr. Chairman. October okay. 9th, 1953. So you've got you've got a you've got a deed into Cisco in 1953. Yeah. Okay. So he had, I mean, for whatever for whatever it means, Mr. Cisco had, even though the the conditions at the time of the regulations, roadway width regulations at the time were 40, he clearly had, uh, you know, roughly seven years to develop this land utilizing lot C. Is, is, a, is a roadway entrance. So it isn't as if he didn't have a window of time to develop you know, this back land. Maybe it didn't, I mean, economically it didn't, maybe it wasn't the time to do it, but he certainly had the, the window of time to do it. Um, I, 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 you know, it, it's, yeah, things change, zoning changes, uh, regulations change, standards change. These, these are, as Scott said in his open, these are always a problem. They're just a problem. So, I mean, from the owner's perspective, the owner has a, has a strip of land that he feels as though he, he is entitled to use. And, and uh, from, the, from, the, from, the, from any planning board's <coughs> perspective, you've got, you've, got to, you've got to make decisions and choices that, that respect, again, convenience, um, safety, and, uh, and access. And that's what a subdivision, any sub, that, that's stated in the subdivision control law. So, I mean, again, we've got lack of information here. I, I don't know. Board members, are you still awake? Did I'm we with you. I'm with, I'm here with you. I'm wide awake. Yeah. Now, Rob, do you think you think in these going forward in these longer meetings that we should send strong brewed coffee to all the board members if it reaches over two hours? I think that would be wonderful, sir. All right. It, is is there any more public testimony? Are we done with that? I have the mics open, so anybody could. Well, there is. This is a preliminary plan, so we're being kind. But there is no. This is not a public hearing because it's a preliminary. A preliminary plan is no more than this, as the discussion tool, uh, which is what we're doing. Um, I don't know. I I'll, I can only speak for me. I these are these are always a problem. Uh, 
for a lot of reasons. One reason is making 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 a design or an engineering transition from the 50 to the 40. I mean, the 50 foot layout, even if you waive things, and I'm not saying that, I'm not speaking for the board and saying that they're going to, but, but there's, there's physical features to a 50 foot road that can't be accommodated in a 40 foot road. And um, then comes the, then comes the, well, I mean, what, what is it? I mean, it just goes on and on. What, what is, what is a practical, You've got you've got two you've got two fully conforming sidewalks that would be five foot each that come to a screeching halt behind lot B and lot D because it, because there isn't room to accommodate them. And then, as I said, you've got hopefully there's not many when you're doing the developing the road. You've got hopefully there's not much of a grade change uh, because you've only got three feet of horizontal distance on either side of the paving of lot C if you stayed with the suggested 34 feet of paving. So there's a lot of challenges to this. I mean, does, does, does reducing the density of what you're trying to do help? I mean, there's a lot of ways that we could, uh, that we could look at this thing, but. So does the applicant want to continue this and try to meet what's required for the right of way? Well, they, they can't, but the fact is that they can't. I mean, all they can do um, for clarification, I appreciate the suggestion, Tony, but all they can do is uh, improve the, uh, with no guarantees, maybe they could improve the preliminary plan, but. Um, uh, Mr. Chairman, is the number of lots, as you just mentioned, is that something lowering the impact of the use? Is that something that would? Well, I mean, I don't, I don't want to be on the, I don't want to be in a position where I'm telling the applicant what to do, but I mean, less is better than more, I guess. But I mean, I don't, again, there's a lot of different moving paths that, uh, to this thing. Um, I, I would like an opportunity to come back uh, maybe with a meet more detailed plan and maybe we can find a way to make it work. Maybe we can't, but. I think that since there's some unanswered questions, perhaps that would assist us. Uh, all right, suggestion made on the part of the of the applicant to uh, continue and revise. Let's see, this is a preliminary. Uh, so what would that require a uh, PM? Would have to ask for a continuance? Um, they would have to ask for a continuance and we will need to get them to sign the waiver freezing the time for approval. If not, then you will have to vote tonight on what is before you. Well, that's before right. you. Are they out of time right now? Because they could never stretch. It's a time. short time window for um, preliminary. For a preliminary. That's preliminary. the problem with a preliminary. For preliminary, excuse me. It's, it, you get one meeting, that's it. 45 that's days. Yeah. yeah, so we have to, Mr. Uh, uh, Attorney Resovic, you'd have to ask for a, a a continuance, otherwise we'd have to vote on it tonight, please. I, th I think we'd like to request the continuance. And you're agreeing to freeze the time clock? Yes. That's the most important thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, well, that's, that's where we are. Um, would someone like to make a motion then? So we're looking at motion to continue to, uh, is there a date we have to include? Um, going to the next meeting. Next meeting, which is March. Second. March second. Motion to continue to March second. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second to continue. Uh, a vote on the roll call. Larry Hassan? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. Reggie Thomas? Yes. And Bob Pelagi is a yes. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Um, Attorney Rezovitz, do you want that? Do you want me to send that to you or just Scott? Yep. Make a difference. Um, that would be fine, Scott. Is that okay with you? Sure, that's fine. Okay. okay. All right. Well, Thank you very much. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, motion to adjourn. Uh, do we have anything else, Pam? No, we do not. You have a pretty full agenda for next month already. I'll make a motion to adjourn. A second. Second. 
Have a good evening to all. Good evening. Take care. Bye, everyone. Thank you bye for, everybody bye. for your time.